now, but are you ready? Oh. Oh. Okay, oh. Me Wait, go now. Hey, folks, welcome to <laughs> Eat. Are we still going? Yeah. Hey, folks, welcome to. <laughs> Night one of Giant Bomb's E3 2013 After Hours show. The most the most dangerous live show on the internet. I'm Ryan Davis. I'm joined by a panel of gaming industry luminaries and uh, panelists. We have uh, John Bellamy from Naughty Dog, a.k.a. Cowboy. Hello. I'm here. I'm yeah. alive. Break, applause, break, yep. applause, break. There we go. Yeah, no. <laughs> Phil Tipitoski, one of the creators of Octodad. No one's and blanked there. What's that? No, no, no. I was, that was, again, dramatic pause. Pause for effect. That was yeah, pause yeah. for effect. That was pause for effect. Absolutely. Octodad. I played that today. You Fucking that applause. From... Did you? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Shit. Pause for Octodad. Why not? What the hell? Uh, Mikey Newman from uh, Gearbox Software. From Gearbox Software. No, I, almost just, I almost just said Borderlands. Comic book writer, you know. Just, <laughs> just whatever. <laughs> Are you multi-hyphenate? Is that what you consider yourself? I, That's your your Justin Timberlake uh, dream is just you know music actor producing MySpace just Vine, 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 Vine superstar Vine superstar is really what I'm going for. You, you've been putting in the work here tonight. I appreciate that. <laughs> no problem. And then one of the co-creators of Cards Against Humanity, friend of Giant Bomb, Max Temkin. Hello. Dan Reichert from Game Informer, and then uh, next to him, Mr. Justin McElroy from <laughs> Polygon. For a I tried, I tried. That's a serious <laughs> nod. <laughs> Give that to the Walker. camera. Give that over there. Hi, I'm Justin McElroy from Polygon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dan! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, Dan. It's good, good to have you here. I got on the heel already. It's just Christ. switched. I, I like the, again, throwing the wrestling terminology around <laughs> fast and loose already. We're I'm all just talking this. down to, to Dan Riker. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank as you. long as it's terms about Bud Heavy and kayfabe. Then you said kayfabe, I was impressed. That was good. <laughs> I, I know just enough about wrestling to be dangerous. All right, I appreciate it. You know way too much about wrestling, which makes you dangerous in your own way. Not really, no. I should also say published author, Dan yes. Riker. Yes, multiple, multiple books. Yeah. I own two books. Two. Buy Dan Riker. You have the paperbacks? Uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. I'm not going to buy a non real version of. Me too. I want that on my shelf. I want wow. to I carry them around in my backpack. It's no, you don't. I actually pulled them out for E3 because I'm like, this is too much extra weight. I'm never going to read these during E3, but. Uh, They're pretty long books, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never cracked a page on either of them, but <laughs> I own both of them, so you have my money. Well, so thank you. What thank the fuck you. do you care yeah. if I read about. I got your three bucks for my royalties, so. <laughs> All right. So is that your cut out of that? Uh, three. A physical copy? Uh, physical three, Kindle seven. Who do you print them through? Uh, Amazon. Ah, damn. Create space. Oh, you didn't create the pretty mm -hmm. good. Well, now I feel now I feel bad for buying the real physical version. If I if I had known, I'd rather have a physical version. We should version. talk. We should talk. I can get, I can keep that number up to seventy five percent. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shit. All right. We'll Eighty percent of the shipping too. So. Mm. I run a rack. Oh, I said that on the. Th okay. <laughs> I don't run a racket. Oh. Go so on. tell us about your racket, Mikey Newman. Yeah. <laughs> well, you see. Well, tell us first about uh, how your your first day of your E three is going. Uh, I was on the show floor for approximately twenty minutes. Okay. Uh, people kicked my cane out from under me no less mm -hmm. than 13 times. <laughs> <laughs> Unintentionally. Um, and that's not a euphemism. They literally kicked your cane no, down. I have a, I have a, Let's I just have show a, it for, for posterity's sake for the, a, the folks watching at home. Cane and they, Actual they, cane. They kicked it. Uh, and that was uh, very unpleasant. Are you the citizen cane of games? You're gonna, have to, you're gonna have to speak up. Phil. I like, I like you got like really close. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the same? Well, I had to, I had to, I had to really. I, f get I in there. regret getting you another Budweiser right now. I think um, it was the right decision. I like to picture Mikey more as the uh, Scrooge McDuck from the <laughs> classic Game Boy game, kind of bouncing around E3. Can you pogo like, on that cane? Yeah. <laughs> game Boy. You well, know what? You know, just get See, it so all out. That's Let's that's my point of reference, too, is the Game Boy version, not the No, the version. NES version. No, clearly the version. superior one. But uh, that was the version I also, like, matched. Really? Played the hell and out. it still yeah. had the pogo thing? Oh, yeah. Really? It was the, it yeah, was the same game. It was good. It was basically uh, the same game. Oh, hey, there's Jeff. We have Jeff Gerstman relaxing at home behind us. <laughs> this is how seriously e E3 is taken here at Giant Pop. So. Serious podcast, serious podcast. Absolutely. So 20 minutes, what'd you see? Uh, Besides the floor from getting your cane kicked out from the beginning. Uh, mostly, mostly just went and buy stuff. Uh, checked out the Fantasia stuff from Harmonix again. Yep. Really cool stuff. That was the uh, one appointment I took today. Was cool. I went and saw it's Fantasia, old. and I had seen it before, but we took a demo, and we have direct feed footage, which I have to say props to Disney Interactive and Harmonix, mostly Disney Interactive, 
for setting up just an awesome direct feed setup there for us. So we've got all that stuff. We'll have it up on the site uh, later on. But uh, yeah, I think the game looks looks really cool. Yeah, I mean, was, mostly to see stuff, I would just go back to my hotel room and try to stream videos. Uh, so I watch stuff that way instead of going to the floor. <laughs> it's weird. There are things. I don't have that a press are... pad. Like you can walk up and go like this, and I can go up and. I, Actually, I... all I have is an exhibitor pass. But exhibitor pass, I think, is the that's it's the gold standard better. because it yes. gets you yeah. in before yep. and after hours. Yes. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's 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 preferred as far as I can tell. So what, what what have you seen that you're? Uh... You just heard it. Fantasia. Yeah. That was my. Oh. That was my oh, one. Okay. So Literally, we're, we're, I, I spent a little more time on the show floor. I went over to the. Or I went over to the Nintendo booth. Walked through there. I saw you know a couple minutes of some uh, Mario Kart being played. A little bit of uh, uh, Super Mario 3D World. Yep. World. Um, those games look really nice. Uh, you know, Mario Kart looks like Mario Kart, but uh, you know it looks it you looks. Go up better. on walls now. It looked like Mario Kart, mm. as far as I could tell. <laughs> Mario what Kart ceilings? And you want in, ceilings? And I, didn't, I didn't see any of that. What Your I wheels saw, go this way. What I saw looked like a like could have been a Mario Kart track in a million other Mario Kart games. What, you didn't the, see those crazy ceilings? I did not stuff? see. Yeah, I didn't see that. I didn't. Oh, see it's great. It's awesome. No, Mario Kart's really good. Okay. Yeah. Well, what's the control scheme? Do you need like a like a, a wheel dingus to play it? A wheel dingus. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> you, you can do the weird plastic wee wheel thing, but uh, also the gamepad you can use, and it's okay. basically just like a giant horn on there that like Wario will fart when you hit it. Oh, but, okay. but I also saw people like tilting it, like you oh, they're just straight up. Well, yeah, you can do just analog just sticks, sticks, which is how I did it. But you can press like one button on the screen, and then it turns into you know tilt. Huh. And uh, the tilt stuff works all right, but I mean, I think a lot of us started like Super Nintendo or 64. Like yeah. we're used to the analog yeah. sticks, yeah. and yeah. that's the preferred method. Maybe this is a explosive question. Load it. <laughs> load, let's load it up. And let's go. Uh, the <laughs> Nintendo stuff. I I was expecting big announcements, and I. I feel like they're maybe preying a little too hard on our nostalgia at this point. I mean, I feel like they made those that an, those announcements a couple Nintendo? months ago yeah. when they did the to. Link to the Past two and Yoshi's Island. Kind of a lot. Yoshi's of Island announcement was one I was like, okay, like, like I, I feel like that set the tone for like this is how Nintendo is going to be approaching the Wii U because they they put it out there and it was such a non-starter at launch okay. and they've had just zero software come out for that thing since then. Like Lego City Undercover. That was the last game I can recall being released significantly for the Wii U. Name a more recent Wii U release. The last one I played, no joke. Polygon. Turned it on. Editor. I did a review of it. Well, yeah. I, it, it had it, Legos. <laughs> do, you, do you remember though when like Nintendo stood for they would they would because the thing is like Zelda and this is the weirdest thing I realized because we were talking about game reboots and stuff like that and and Zelda is actually just a game reboot every time. Yeah. Yeah. It comes out and I was like, oh, that's interesting. But then they stopped doing that. They kind of push the boulder up the mountain and are just riding it down. Just yeah. Keep, keep, I, I too. I, 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 I pick up the stuff. It's good. But I expected big announcements, but then I was kind of kicking myself out afterwards. Like, why did you expect a curveball? I mean, like, yeah. it is literally the most predictable. Like, we've got this one and this one and this one and this one, and, and they've been riding that, you know, for for years since the Wii has started to to diminish. I don't think they know what where to go next. Well, outside of like, if they announce a new HD Zelda coming out, like, I mean, what's the big bombshell they could have dropped here? No one's hey, expecting Daniel, a hardware bend announcement. Your, your little mic thing down. A yeah, bit. yeah. There you go. I mean, no one's expecting like a hardware announcement or anything from Nintendo. So like outside of a big Zelda announcement or something, like hey, I, they announced I, Smash Brothers. I didn't, I didn't have that it. expectation. Everything that they announced was, yeah, it was purely, pre it was predictable. Yeah. But that was also totally what I was expecting because I feel like they've set the tone already for where Nintendo is going to go with with their first party stuff this generation. Is they're going to keep people who have Wii U's? They're going to hold on to their Wii U's because they're going to say, well. I want something that to play all these Nintendo first party games on. And you know, that's been the hook since the GameCube. What's weird to me is they had two they, they had one calendar year between the release of the Wii U and the release of of PS4 and Xbox One where they knew, I mean they had to know, they're not dummies, like they knew we have one year where we're gonna be a comparable platform. And I, did you did you like see the press conferences? I, I, I'm not sure that everyone isn't dummies. Like there's yeah, I mean well, there's a lot of dummies. That's, that's or true. there's a lot of people there's a, a lot of, of Publishers and there's a lot of console holders that believe a lot of things about themselves. Uh, that's that's the impression that I got from a, a lot of what I saw. You know, I mean, we can talk about the way that you know Sony kind of came in and did some crazy shit, which I was that <clears throat> to me bucked the trend of what I would have expected Sony to do. Like to me, Sony. 
like you know when they when they made their first PS4 announcement, it was like, wow, this is such a change of pace for what I expect from a, a Sony presentation. And they doubled down on it on it at E3, you know, at their press conference yesterday. Uh, and you know, we came into this thing thinking they're going to toe the line on the used game stuff that Microsoft's, you know, they're just the first ones out there, but then Sony's just going to say, no, we're pretty much doing the same thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, Microsoft wasn't just some lark. That was, you know, the publishers made these demands, and if we were going to play ball, that's, you know, what was going to happen. And I figured maybe 50 bucks under on the price thing, because I thought, okay, you know, they don't have Kinect, so they can, you know, justify this offset, but it's, it's what you hear about the hardware specs sounds so similar, that's like, it seems that that would match up. So for them to, to go as hard as they did, I wasn't expecting that at all. But like Microsoft and Nintendo, as far as I'm concerned, you know, handled themselves the way that I think they've always, or yeah. in the last several years, have handled themselves. So like none of that surprised me. Yeah, I mean, Nintendo's not gonna be able to graphically hang with the other two consoles, and I think they know that. I mean, they have to be aware of it. I'm just surprised they didn't capitalize on this time more before those consoles came out. I mean, as far as we can, I can tell, that things are going to get better for the Wii U, but really not until October. I mean, even some of those big games are 2014. I mean, yeah. They're going to be yeah. way into the next generation. I, I think. I think one of the, the problems with the Wii U is like they have this. Re I mean, I, I'm really excited by the control scheme of that thing. Like, I'm I'm probably one of the only people I know who, when they announced that thing, I thought it was an awesome direction to go in and. I just, my imagination like ran wild with it and re like the, there really just hasn't been a lot of creativity on the part of developers like doing anything that, that proved that concept. So I know um, Nintendo is like pretty aggressively taking meetings with uh, a lot of like Phil and I's friends, uh, you know, indie, indie folks and yeah. I know there's like people making really weird and exciting stuff for it. So my, my hope is like maybe some indie people will bring some innovation to the platform yeah. and that will inspire some more development and they'll, there'll be a little like excitement around the platform. But I just think there's no, no one has figured out what to do with that thing yet because uh, you can't make traditional, you know, it, it, it you know, it, it's, it's not going it. yeah, to not going to compete with the other consoles for, for very traditional games. Like it just doesn't have that, that's not what it's built for. Know throw your UI on there and just call it a day. Like I'm I'm really excited for like things like Spy Party if if they could bring that. Yeah. yeah. Well there was there was a Penny Arcade comic and they were like you know, the whole comic was just like, how about a D and D campaign where one person has the Wii U controller and they're the dungeon master. That's a that's a fantastic game. Like I wanna play yeah. that. I can't believe no one's made something with that concept that I can play right now on the Wii U. It's uh, just shock what's shocking is that those innovations you're talking about aren't coming from Nintendo. It's like Dan said, you, you know, the, the screen is a horn. Like that's, <laughs> the, that's, that's the fucking best you have. Why did you even make the damn? Did someone else make you do it? Like other than that, I don't know why. If you didn't I, have, I it, believe you said it was a horn, but if you press it, Oreo farts. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's okay. pretty good. Yeah. So much of it seems just. It seems very un Nintendo about that system of like them just kind of grasping at like. I, we, motion controls work, but like we couldn't keep that going on the Wii, so I, people are touching everything right now, so how about touchscreen stuff? Like, it seemed like that Which, was as much thought they got put into it, and, and similarly for, you know, the hardware specs that they pushed out on the system of like, oh, well, you know, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 games, those will run awesome on this thing. It's like, but I'm not going to care about that so soon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, Nintendo hardware has always worked really well for first-party Nintendo games. Like, the GameCube controller, like, you don't want to play Soul Calibur on that thing. But for Wind Waker or Mario Sunshine or something, it, it felt really... You know. I see. I, I agree, and that's why I think that any expectation uh, of more than right. something that's going to support first-party Nintendo... But, yeah, Justin, your point of Nintendo barely making any interesting yeah. use of the thing. Uh, like, you know, remember when they first unveiled the system when they were like... They had the crazy tech demos of, you know, you're going to shoot Ninja Stars at this pirate ship and, you know, hold sideways. Like, those tech demos, to this day, most interesting Wii U stuff I've ever seen. Like, no production game that I've played has had stuff that I think is as interesting as, as what those original tech demos did. Well, but think of a Zelda. I mean, there's going to be an HD new Zelda on there, and having the whole inventory down there and the map and everything. Like, look at Ocarina of Time 3D, like going through the Water Temple. It's great to be able to, you know, just tap. So oh, put it out on Iron the 3DS. And stuff. Don't, yeah, don't, and, and I consistently I still have the issue of you know picking up that system, getting to a simple UI element, and having no idea what screen I should be looking at. No idea of like, okay, where is the input? Like, where's the where's anything on this system? Like, they have to so often just you know have text on the screen like, look down, stupid. 
Like, nope, stop looking at this screen. Look at the other one because they're you know trying to jump back and forth. Yeah. It's, a, it's tough to try and split that attention. Like when I'm looking at my phone when I'm watching TV, it's like I'm glancing down here for a second. Like it's that that sort of attention split, which is maybe the can, reason can, why can they I, can I reshape this? the conversation a little bit? Because yeah. I, I, we obviously talk about uh, sim similarities in hardware and and uh, obviously Nintendo's a little further out there and, and whatever. Like, do you remember when the Super Nintendo launched and the Sega Genesis launched? It was a killer app that really made your decision for you. Like, no one was like, well, that blast processing thing that the Genesis has. <laughs> yeah. No, it was like, I like Mario, I like Sonic. Right. And, and. Like, hey, I saw Strider, it, that looked amazing. Yeah. X Soul Xbox, Xbox started paving the way with, with, with Halo. And, and I feel like between the Wii U and the Xbox and the, and the PS4 uh, right now, there's not like a thing that we're like, oh, that's the killer app. So now we're arguing about other things. Sure. As opposed to whoever makes a killer piece of software that we all have to play wins. I mean, that's that's the the fact. Like, I don't think price point matters as much as people are making it. I, I I don't think some of the DRM stuff that people are arguing about it matters as much. It's 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 going to come down to that piece of software that you have to have. I'll, I'll tell you the killer app for the PlayStation 4. It's Octodad. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that Octodad demo yesterday. Do you want and got to kiss my, me? Uh, or are you going to come no, over well, here? Well, and just we, we solved it. I'll, I'll see you guys. Consult with you checks in the mail. Oh, there we go. Yep. <laughs> Good That's what face I touch. Well, all right, all right. <laughs> but, I mean, you know what I'm saying, though. Like, it, there, it's 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 interesting, and yeah. I think that's where yeah. where Xbox 360, at least in America. Obviously, in Europe, it was a much uh, different race. But in America, Xbox started to pull away from the PS3. Here in America, the way we do things, land of the free. US gamer. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout US out. Gamer is, is a very good development company. <laughs> That's our hashtag for the night, US Gamer. Go ahead and put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to people about our live show. Buzz Marketing. We're representing the United States here. I don't even know what's happening anymore. Mario. That's <laughs> shit. Oh. No. But yeah, like, like Halo and Gears. Like yeah. When Gears came out, that blew my mind. I was like, sure. oh, okay. So that's what the 360 is about, you know? Um, and I'm, I, we're, we're in that weird middle ground, because we haven't been in that middle ground in a long time. Yeah. A long, 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 long time. Sure. Which is actually great as a developer, because we really got to, to you know, ring out everything we could out of the consoles. Um, we got really good at making 360 games, PS3 games, you know. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's always scary starting over, and I think you, you end up like kind of splitting your bet on, on 360 and PS3 and Xbox One and PS4. Like you see that with Watch Dogs and some of the Ubisoft stuff. Because um, you gotta have a massive, massive backing to pull something like that off. But yeah, you, you, you end up sort of hedging. Because like nobody, I think, wants to be like the first next-gen thing. To me, that's but everybody like, wants to be Gears of War. So I, I think that like this, that's making this f the most exciting E3 I've ever seen. Uh, I just think there's like it's a really it's just a really weird time in in the industry like in general because you know the consoles are for the most part like technically sufficiently like technically advanced that you know there's not we're I feel like we're we're past the era of like these like huge technical breakthroughs that allow you know graphically like new types of games. Well, I mean the fact that PS4 and Xbox One that we're dealing with such comparable hardware you right. know, on an architectural level of like it's all basically PCs. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know. On, with 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 some exceptions, and obviously there's there's some stuff where that's not true, but and everyone has their own platform standards of stuff. But that's where you f start finding your, your diverging. So so it's your I mean diverging so diverging markets is like what is the publishing philosophy of these two different companies? Obviously, you know stuff concerning the used games and and DRM and what have you. Like that's going to play out very publicly now, and you know that's going to obviously whether it truly impacts a lot of people and like the way that they play and consume games it is such a huge mind share thing it is such a huge like regardless of what the reality is of like how I'm going to play games you know someone is going to say I don't like these policies the way this stuff sounds doesn't sound like a thing I want to get involved in like they're going to make their choices you know based on that regardless yeah I mean each each of the each of these console makers and also all of the different alternative platforms and the other people out there who are who are doing their own thing they're each having to like put forward these arguments of like, okay, here's what games are for, and here's who we think plays games, and here's how our platform or device, like we see it being used in your life and your relationship to this technology. And it's like I just, people are talking about such like a weird and interesting things on the floor. Like I've had all these conversations about like the connect and like people's fear of like wiretapping and like it's just this like weird 
you know, you, you start to go down these different roads of like what is the the role of games and technology and art in people's lives, and all of these different companies have really different ideas of uh, of how that should work and, and how people should engage with that. I'd like to ask you guys because uh, more people, uh, y- you know, we have people here who actually like make games. The, the question that I've been struggling with since this started, since we went into E3, is I haven't seen a reason yet. I, I like game. I, I like game mechanics. Like that's 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 what attracts me to to this whole thing. I I haven't seen yet from a gameplay perspective the reason that we are moving on to a new generation. Like I, I haven't seen yet, and that's what I would have been hoping to get sort of excited about. I haven't seen like a thing in a game that is being done where oh god this could have never happened before. Mm. Like this this is the reason that I'm buying a new box. Can Not I just add- better graphics, but like. There's a mechanic here. There's something like that that, that has. Can I, can I ask from the AAA perspective? Please, yeah. Because um, it's not going to come down to mechanics in the regard you're talking about. I will say that with how we make stuff, and I think I think Borderlands 2 is a really good example of, of what we've accomplished technically. I mean, we managed to get four DLCs and two downloadable characters and all these skins and all these things. I mean, like we have. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the memory wasn't just bulging out of these things because <laughs> we've hit the limit, and it's and it's like. It's game mechanic. Like we can invent new game mechanics now. I can invent new game mechanics on a, on a twenty six hundred. Do it right now. New Do game it right mechanic. now. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, like, <laughs> but uh, uh, see what I'm saying though. Like yeah. we, we we've we've advanced uh, the size of the world and and what we're able to do. And I, I think Borderlands is just the the easiest example for, for me to, to say it. But yeah, we've we've peaked it. Like it's there's I not a I lot we can. I wish that case was being made better because it seems like every. I'm I've sorry I didn't make it good enough. Not for you. you, not you. <laughs> I will try order. harder. By the people that are asking for my money, like I, I wish that the uh, so much of the conversation seems to be about how these boxes are going to interface with the consumer, like how it's going to change it as a platform for consumption. And well, I think I think that's kind of to me like one of the the key things that no one is. It's not really a selling point, or it's not it's it's not an easily sellable point, but. Everything that we now kind of take for granted about the like connected console experience, mm-hmm. none of that stuff was a status quo when this last generation started. Absolutely, you know, but, I, but you I, know, I, like things, you know, remember there's a 50 megabyte limit on Xbox Live Arcade games. Yeah, it was yeah, basically yeah, yeah, yeah. just like we want to make Smash TV for a new system. Uh, Love it. You know. The way Sony, like Sony, had next to nothing for online stuff when they launched their last platform. So I feel like we've had all of this stuff bolted on to these existing platforms. Turn on your Xbox 360, go make a sandwich, come back, and maybe you'll be at a menu where you can actually select to do maybe anything. <laughs> Someone make Jeff a sandwich. Maybe a sandwich. Um, you know, and this is all the stuff that now is this comes with the package. This is part of the deal now. Yeah, okay. You know, but Netflix but is on everything and we accept that, but all this stuff comes with a certain amount of overhead that if you were to design... Let's, if you were to design the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 from scratch and know going in that, hey, like this, this, and this are going to become huge deals to consumers that downloadable games, games of all these different sizes are going to become, you know, huge factors in the market, they probably could have made those systems do everything that we need them to do. Yeah. But they didn't because it wasn't an issue at the time when they were developing that stuff and they were designing it. So uh, that's one of the things that I see as being a big advantage of this of a new generation of hardware is here's all these things that we take for granted but are slogging. They're just pressing down on these systems and, and making it difficult for them to do all the functions that we want them to do. Uh, I think it's less dramatic now because we can update systems online. So it's like the the Xbox 360 of 2013 is so different than the Xbox 360 of 2005. Bring back the blades, Microsoft. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible. Well, it's no. different from a, we from want. an interface, from you know an aesthetic perspective. But the but hardware is never let. No, I mean you can do ever. Netflix when you first got your Xbox. I mean, like you said, the 50 megabyte limit and stuff on Xbox Live Arcade. I mean, PlayStation didn't have trophies at the beginning. You can fix that stuff as it goes now. So it's not all of a sudden like, oh, okay, this. Netflix Next generation. But like I said, turn on your Xbox 360. Like, you could say these things of, oh, we can update it. Oh, software fixes it. At, at a certain point, it stops working, and we Ooh. reach that, I'd say... Like, I, I would make the point, though, that's not <laughs> actually in the game. Okay. And so, like, maybe something I could bring up as a counter-argument to, like, well, what is this extra technology, extra horsepower bring to the quality of the game that you will play? I'd point to The Division. 
as something that, as a demo, really impressed me because I see a lot of like sophistication that you could do in isolation in AAA games on the past generation. Like maybe the animations are really good, but like the worlds have to be really small because yeah. you have to count for the extra memory. But like this is like doing animations, big environment, sweet particle effects, like the the sort of like dense environments where you go into a building and there's stuff to do in that in building, and you come out and like now there's like online play. Putting all that together, like going wide like that, in terms of game design, not something you could do on previous generations. And seeing stuff like that, like as someone who has to program that shit, <laughs> it's exciting. It's yeah. something. It's like, it's like that is actually kind of feasible now. Like and, and I feel we like we don't have to like make compromises on like, well, we don't. We have to do online, so like, well, no, this has to look worse for it. I mean, Naughty Dog is, I think, one of the probably best examples of a developer that has rung just about all that there is to be rung out Holy of the PS3 crap. hardware. Like, <laughs> right, but right. If you see the limits being smacked up against with stuff like Last of Us. Of like, there are things about this that just look unparalleled. Yeah. And and there are things about it where it's like I can tell that they wanted to push this element further, but just h hardware limitation. This changeover could not have come at a better time for us because if we had to hit that <laughs> limitation <laughs> one more time, I think we would have just been pulling our hair I'm out. I'm surprised I don't see more people talking about that division. That, that was one where the gra the uh, graphically it actually really stood out to me. There was this great moment where your guys taking cover behind a police car. Spoiler. And oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, 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 bullets are coming through the police car window, and actually, being the holes are being rendered, and the the way those like two holes close to each other, forming one hole as the window continues to break down, and that was like all being rendered real time. That was super exciting. Yeah. I don't know, like if but it's a, a gameplay mechanic, it makes me sound like <laughs> kind well, of no, like, it's not, it's bullet it's holes in the glass. <laughs> it's, it's not amazing. like it's not like this Roll is like bullets. giving you like a specifically a new mechanic or specifically better graphics. It's that we can give you more of everything. And Man. like the fact that you don't have to like, you know, <laughs> you know there really you go. Macro's pulling the checkbook now. <laughs> right. Someone yeah. doesn't, yeah, copyright that. We'll give you more of everything. How does okay. that not sound appealing? Perfect. I, I like everything. Like, <laughs> like, I like TGI Fridays. Yeah, I mean, I, next I, is the TGI <laughs> Fridays of games. This is still America, so more of everything. That sounds great. But I think you're. I think it's a it's a it's a really fair criticism of like all across the board, like all of the com the 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 uh, press conferences that we saw is just like they're what like. You know, I didn't. I saw very like little gameplay stuff that was really exciting, and I, I've been. I've I've also been thinking about that, and like I think it's like a combination of like that that for the history of video games has been technology moving forward in these like huge leaps, and then game designers like thinking of fun things to do with it. And there, we don't have those huge leaps like going to this next generation. It's a very, it feels like a very like a like an iteration of the last those, generation. Those are inverted graphs, innovation graphics do that. And also like the, just the cost, like the, cards on, like the tracks on Mario Kart, like yeah. <laughs> crossover. Yeah. The, but also just like the, the cost of developing, a, you know, a triple A AAA game. Like I, I, you know, it's like it's staggering, and I, I can't imagine like for a triple A AAA studio that they can take a risk on on yeah. a crazy new kind of gameplay that who knows if it's going to be good or, or the public's going to like it. I mean, that's and, also, and I also I also very think we are iterative. we are in this moment here where like we're seeing flashes of it. I think Division's a fantastic example of it. Did you see uh, Destiny? Like. Yeah, yeah, Destiny, yeah, Destiny, Destiny is yeah. another great example. That looked like, next gen to me. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah that like, demo turned me. I was a fucking. I was a. There was a lot going on in that demo. But very subtle lighting stuff too. I was. But like, we, but they're still they're still on. having Ooh, to support. Like, Destiny is still coming out on the Xbox 360, right? I I've, I've like that. These, these I, I don't games, think we've seen it on the 360. But, but what I'm saying is like these these games, which are ostensibly these next generation games, a lot of these are still going to have to come out on yes. the current generation of systems, right? So there is the development overhead of that. Whether that means that's being thrown off on another, uh, you know, another development studio to handle, like okay, you guys handle the 360 and PS3 versions while the big boys play with the new toys. Um, <laughs> uh, but so so like there's that amount of overhead, but then there's also just the reality of you know, these new gameplay paradigms, the things that are going to sell Justin McElroy some shiny new black it don't take To much, be fair, he gets everything polygons. for free, though. Oh, that would be, I wish. So. <laughs> okay, really? We got, too many, we got too many fucking people, man. We get, like, That's true, yeah. yeah. Polygon hired, like, half the planet. We so. yeah, yeah, we have, My like, mom works for Polygon. I was <laughs> really surprised to hear that. She's a super talented lady, by the way, and she's a hell of a Hi, Mom. Uh, is she watching? Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I bought, I mean, I pre-ordered. She technically both. works for Arthur. Let's be fair, <laughs> I pre-ordered so. both of them. Uh, I don't know if I'll. I'll uh, I haven't talked to my wife yet about it, so we'll see if both of those stick. <laughs> but uh, that was fun making nine hundred dollars worth of pre-orders yesterday. And I'm like, well, we'll uh, 
Put it in now, because... Well, that's another cool thing about this console generation that we haven't seen before, is, like, these guys are... These two are going, like, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, probably within weeks, right, of, e of each other launching. That's, that's true. Having in, having the, the a, closeness of the launch. Like, both are going to have to come out in November, right? There's no way you're buying... I mean... Most people are not gonna. I have to. There's gonna be a family that's like, okay, we gotta do Thanksgiving dinner, or we gotta do the Xbox One. I, we, mm, yeah, we, we can't we, do both. You know, you know no, when I was no, uh, the the and I'm canceling Netflix. I learned. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I can't afford the gold subscription. My when I uh, when I learned that Santa Claus wasn't real. What? Sorry, kids. Uh, <laughs> go to bed. Um, I don't have kids. Sorry, Mike's mom. <laughs> uh, when I learned Santa Claus wasn't real, my uh, my dad came to me and said that. Um, uh, he was gonna. He in order to buy an NES for us for Christmas. Yeah. He was gonna have to sell my Atari and all my games to a guy he worked with. <laughs> and I said, "What? I mean, I was I was eight. And I said, you know, what? Isn't S Santa Claus just gonna bring me? And my dad, no bullshit, looks at me in the eye and says, "Santa Claus wants to see you really want it." <laughs> <laughs> Santa wanted you to know what? Props to Pomp <laughs> and McElroy for pulling that one out the of his man pocket. Man of a sacrifice. That's a tough. That's that's a tough thing to face down your eight-year-old son, basically asking you like, look, "Look, prove to me that Santa Claus is real." It's, it was yeah, it was a it was quite the hail mary. <laughs> well, you pulled it off. <laughs> so you didn't make it to the show floor at all today, Justin. No. Nope. What you been What you been up to? I've I've been sitting in our uh, our we have like a floor of this weird. Space? I don't know. It's very nondescript. The penthouse, the W. The polygon then? Yeah. It looks like the aggro crag. It looks like the Oh, well, that's <laughs> our... So that's our E3 booth. And then we have this off-site floor of like a... Seems like a place where people make art, maybe, or sell <laughs> tchotchkes. I don't know. It's like a... It's called LA Mart. I don't know. Okay, maybe. yeah. Okay, so it's like Actually, a, all, like almost seriously... When we found this place, like I was looking into other places, and that was one it's of just places. this weird. I mean, it's like literally like it could be space. a retail space, it Maybe could be it's someone's a office, yeah, it it's could be yeah, it could be an art gallery, it could be a billion other things. It's so just like here's kind of this space in L.A. So I didn't, yeah, I didn't. I mean, I flew here and then yeah. I went there, and I have not left there. That's what I've been doing this whole time. So I, what was your? So you watched all the, the press conferences via yeah. the internet? Yeah, yeah, I watched them. I, I have. Spent my la I've been doing this since 2007, and I've spent uh, the last you know, my entire career. I've been sort of you know, I own both PS3 and 360, I, but I if given my druthers, I usually prefer to play on 360. Sure. I, I like the control a little better. I like the landscape better. I like the UI better. That, that's what I prefer. So that's that's always been sort of my platform of choice. Now I cover both. Where did that Gatorade lid come from? I don't know. Just why are you gesturing with it now? <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> let's get rid of it. Okay. <laughs> By the end of the uh, PlayStation 4, I had this switch flipped in my head. I was like, oh my god. I, yep. I'm, I'm a Sony crony. I am. <laughs> I, got, I got flipped. I want that one. That's the one that I'm like more excited about. I, and I think it was partially relief that Sony had, had delivered me from like what I thought was a pretty kind of a scary future. Like kind yeah. of like a... A weird place that well, games it's, it's are a going. Thing. We we talked about this on the site when the when Microsoft laid out their ground rules for the the DRM stuff, and you know I feel like it's a lot of stuff that's going to be like super fringe case for probably the vast majority of consumers. Most people are going to play on one system. Yeah. You know there, yes, there's some amount of people that you know there's there's clearly a lot of people that are selling their games back to GameStops and and what have you. What is that? Jeff, 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 you all right, buddy? Jeff's taking a nap. You good? <laughs> He's good. Don't worry <laughs> about, about that laptop. a lot of rustling. Uh, but for, but for the gaming professional of like, okay, I'm playing this game at home, and then I'm going to go into the office and try and play this game on another system, there are things about that that, again, don't mind Jeff. Uh, it's tough not to. So I told you, don't. We got to roll him over on his side so he doesn't choke. Do yeah. not acknowledge Jeff. He's fine. He's holding up his phone. That's good he called for help. Call Twitter for help. Hashtag help. I'm Major Nelson. Come get me. <laughs> Come get me, Larry. Come get me. They won't let me go. If the Major doesn't come for you, then. Yeah. You guys are talking about PlayStation. You got help. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that got picked up on the mics. Yeah. I, I, I may have not gotten I think over the. the old GameStop <laughs> <laughs> might not have made it out over the 
chuckles of the crowd. The here, interwaves. But, uh, yeah. Uh, what he said was really funny, you guys. Dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had to be love there, to right? be here. Um, In the murder cabin. But yeah, like I again, I was not expecting Sony to do what they did, but when they did, like it's it, it's incredible. It, I, this is my thirteenth E three, and I've I've been here for when the Nintendo press conferences were like kind of scary, when they were like inviting in a lot of like really intense Nintendo fans and. Just the mention of the name Zelda caused the room to go into weird. Yeah, but you could do that orgasms. at Best Buy now. You just go to your local <laughs> Best Buy. Yeah, and and then cheer on the. I'll stop. I'll but stop but seeing but seeing people like fucking lose their goddamn minds over Sony saying we're keeping things the way that they are. Yeah, that's all it's ever. <laughs> they were they chanting said, Sony. They it's, chanted Sony. Yeah, like it's a wrestling insane. Crowd. It's insane. Uh, but like that's clearly how strong people felt about this issue. Like that's how much of a deal yeah, it was. Who, to them are the, who are the people in that room? Right? Plants. Right? No, I mean, I, some plants. I asked. Um, no, it's not, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's mostly press, no, right? Like I asked Andy McNamara. Andy McNamara about it. It is mostly press. Certainly, it's mostly journalists. But like you know, there's usually plants or whatever to say like woohoo or whatever. Sure. But Andy sure. was saying that like he was there at the Sony thing. And that, like, the whole crowd had that. They were all cheering. Everyone was freaking out. Yeah. People chanting Sony. It wasn't just, like, a few plants or whatever. It was, like, the crowd, basically. No, I was there. I, I was excited. Yeah. Like, I, and I couldn't Shit, even tell you why rich. at the time. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I, okay, from, from my perspective, <laughs> I, my, my future is better if both systems are successful and sure. whatever we put our games on, yeah. Yeah. it works for that. The thing is... I like some people are doing like a mic drop like hashtag you know yeah. and I'm like I don't I don't see anything like there's there's a number of futures here I there's not like a this one won by a million miles I mean it's gonna be close again it always it is it was so I, I was not I wasn't at any of these things I was just like watching the videos afterwards but I think there was just like I, I just felt like a, a, a lot of a lot of like anxiety about um, like those those Microsoft both of the Microsoft press conferences were just so like weird and stilted and awkward. I, I didn't see the same thing. Uh, the oh, killer instinct thing. It was just so like. It was, was just so. It was so like. Uh, I don't the know, first one to me, I was like, that was a genius press conference because it wasn't. I, I they weren't was talking like, to the hardcore. I, I thought it was. I thought it was like su- super corporate, super stuffy, and I just felt very. Oh, they had that. They had that totally non-scripted Skype conversation. Yeah. Like yeah. Ours yeah. Is good. I don't know. I, hey I Max, felt like. How are you doing on Skype? <laughs> yeah. on your ex- no. Uh, John Teddy from Game Logical Society had this great piece where he talked about how the difference yeah. between the two press conferences where... That, that is a fantastic article. It's a great yeah, article. And that he was talks great. About Microsoft is, is talking to a demographic filled with a non-existent person. Like a not... <laughs> not a, not a per- it's someone I don't, that I don't a marketer came up with. A consultant said, here's your demographic. Figure out a way to talk to this... This piece this wedge. This piece whoa, 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 whoa. And, and Sony is not... Not perfectly, hang but on, it's talking on, to. Hang on, hang on. It, it felt good to be. To it me. felt good to be talked to like man. a human being. To, yeah, to yeah, have exactly. to have like real that's people on the stage, and and that's like that's what the rent. That's what the the DRM and the used game thing comes down to for me is like I I I don't think I've ever ha- bought a used game in my life. Like it doesn't matter to me as a user of used games, but it's like does the platform owner feel how how do they regard my rights as a user? Like well, do wanna, do I own those I wanna, games I or not? I want to pull back for a second because it, like saying that they weren't they, they might not have been talking to you, they might have been talking to you. That's fine. They were talking to some people. And the thing I like cuz I, I saw people been like I don't want a fucking TV, I want an Xbox. And I'm like if you had the information in front of you of how popular cuz like think about when the Xbox 360 launched, Netflix Instant didn't even exist. You know how huge that platform is for people? Like, if you were to get, I said, wager a guess of the number of people that are on Xbox 360 and have never put a game in it, what would you say? Mm-hmm. The people that have owned an Xbox 360 and have never used it for anything other than instant video, what would your guess be? I would guess that there are people who are paying $100 at least too much. That's like, wh- why sure, would you Sure, other things, but I'm, j- I'm just saying, like, that demographic <laughs> does exist. You can't say it doesn't exist. I, wh- how I mean, do you, how I'm do you sure watch they have de- I'm, uh, but again, Do you, wa- do you watch Game of Thrones on your, saying, on your Xbox? I'm not saying individual uh, You're talking, talking about a demographic exists I'm conceding the point that this demographic exists I'm just saying they're not fun to fucking talk to Like you, We're no, not that talking to you, But you, you originally said they were talking to a demographic They were like they were well, He was like, just conveying a, 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 a He made article. a wedge He was there conveying was an article that was Hey listen I didn't write Take it up with tech This is a 31% window It felt a lot more calculated And it didn't feel Here's the thing. Even if you say, even if you say, okay, it, it's not being bought by people who are playing games. I guarantee 
that most of the people who are buying it who aren't gamers are making a call to someone that are, are talking to people who are buying games. I, I mean, I've gotten that call before. Like, hey, is this is this good? You know, and, right. and even if that audience isn't the one yeah, buying yeah, yeah, everything, yeah. they're still the one talking to the people buying things. Like, it, I, I have to respond to that. Like, I, I'm not I'm not saying it, it should exist in that way. It, it's a video platform or whatever. Like, I think we want to buy game platforms. I love making games. That's what I do. Like, I obviously want that to succeed. I'm just saying I find their bet very interesting because... They, like Xbox's bet is we're going to put a piece of entertainment in your living room and you're not going to have to worry about anything else. Plays your games, does your Netflix. You don't, need, you don't need to buy the Apple TV. You don't need to buy the Blu-ray player. You don't need that. This does everything. Well, what I'm hearing is that it's not bet. like Microsoft has made we all like, watch Breaking technical Bad. design that, errors. The reality of it. What? It doesn't sound like Microsoft has made like, technical <laughs> design errors. Like, oh, that was foolish with input on it. It's more like they've made messaging strategy errors and how, like, how they want to talk mm-hmm. about this. Here's a, here's a philosophical sure, sure. It's it's a, it's, I See, I, I think it's... I, sorry to cut you off. I mean, I, I think it's a combination of both. Like, I think Microsoft... I, so I, I, I think that article was spot on because it just talks to... It just speaks to, like, Microsoft's viewpoint of, like, who this thing is for and how you're supposed to use it in your life. And I think they're just... Ma- across the board, they're making weird, if not maybe bad decisions. But, like, you know, the, the whole the whole... Just uh, like like so much of the functionality of, of like the the like banner functionality of that thing of like you know many people I know watch TV and then they want to look something up about the show or go online or look at their email or Twitter Use while they're Xbox watching TV. Yeah, yeah, but like who? But like <laughs> so ostensibly, but like the people who do yeah, that, yeah, they're yeah. they're pretty geeky people, right? Like to be watching sure. TV and then be like, I need yeah. more information right now on another screen. That's already a pretty geeky thing. So like who? What geek is you know who's technologically savvy? Is in that scenario and being like, let me let me make my TV show smaller and call up a bunch of windows versus like let me take the phone out that I already am just, logged into this all is my apps. an example of a use of having this virtualized environment, and it's just because that's the one they chose to display and the one they chose to message doesn't mean that's the one that's going to be the most popular with that system. No. Like it doesn't invalidate the reason for creating that platform. It just means that they are doing a terrible job of explaining what this is useful Fair for, for the people yeah. who are watching. That and that to me is the whole. I I, I was actually into the first. Uh, you know, I was into the first Microsoft press conference. Oh, okay, that's. that's interesting you guys are yeah. trying trying some stuff cool i had a it raised a lot of i think my use of tv is so specific that they're going to have to get to keep me from pressing the input button they're going to have to get everything right. I mean, if I can't access yeah. my DVR, forget about it. If I can't go on the on-demand, forget about it. But at it's the same time, I fucking hate all of my cable stuff. No, like, it's a with nightmare. The white hot system, the Thousand yeah, Fire Sun. So, like, you want to talk about consumer hostile? Yeah, talk if, about like if, Comcast if can, menus. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, oh. that box that could eat a big remote. Yeah. Everything about eat it is just fair, absolutely fair question. Fair question. The if worst. You, if you could talk to Verizon, yeah, and they said your DVR and your cable box, we'll say a 360 or a, a Xbox One for 300 bucks. Well, you, you sign a contract. This is everything. Would you do it? Would you? Would you then go? Oh, hang on. This might make sense. I mean, I did it anyway, so I'm not like the target target down because I pay. I pay. Well, no. I mean, we, we all have <laughs> we all have cable boxes. I'm we all have DVRs. Right. I'm saying if I don't know like, anyone who has. I guess other than you, who has any of those things. You don't have a DVR. Yeah. I don't have cable. No. Yeah. Do you have, I, do you have, I, don't, I don't have a TV. Do you have any of that stuff? I have a TV. Old Pete. a hipster. I see over here. We have we have a TV in the office to like play games on and and watch you know. I Hulu Netflix and Apple TV. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Watch. I watch stuff on my laptop. I I use Apple for a lot of stuff. It's you me. And yeah. Professor I, over here. <laughs> oh, professor, I just, no, I'm into. I mean, I, 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 I have a I TV. Like that's stuff. not a dumb thing, right? No, like, no, no, I, no, I don't no, have no. a house phone. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that. The, the, but, but my, <laughs> I'm not like I don't know what time it is. I'm gonna call Time and Temp. Yeah. To find <laughs> out. He popcorn doesn't, like, doesn't work anymore. I can't call that to find out the time. <laughs> he doesn't have a dumb waiter. It's not like. A, <laughs> <laughs> I have a TV. I have a, I have a he fucking is television. He's suffering man. from the Scarlet Rubella, though. So you know. <laughs> this is Mikey's maid closet. <laughs> this is where the butler was. Um, oh, no, but. Okay, I don't want. So I don't want to ever go to the internet again. Ever after. <laughs> so that, but no, it's it, but it's as valid of people, you know that. More than half this table, people don't have cable. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Like, maybe here's there's, there's like, like we don't represent. There's America. like there's yeah, there's yeah, uh, there's yeah. one function of the Xbox that I'm interested in at this point, and it's the new Cappy game. And I just yeah. hope it comes out on another yeah. platform, so I don't have to get a. If an they would have spent half of that conference just talking about that game, yeah. I'm like sold. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you got it. And and I and I think that, you know. There is a, a level, obviously there are some distinct differences here, but I think that, you know, people acclimated to the way that Valve runs Steam, and I think that that's a pretty close parallel to uh, to certain policies that Microsoft's enacting with the Xbox One, but it took time. Mm-hmm. People fucking hated 
Valve and Steam when that shit first came out, when that was the only way you could get Half-Life 2, it it was the bane of all game players the world over. And it took years of them offering consistent good service, you know, Steam sales, all these things to, you know, endear and engender themselves with the, the gaming populace. And Microsoft has to put in that work. You know, they, they haven't they haven't started yet really. That, and I think that's the thing that concerned me more than anything. When we're talking about these press conferences, it wasn't just it, it was like you said, it wasn't just the the design or the choices they made with the actual box. It's the fact that some of the stuff they've put out and put forth has been so tone deaf and so like unaware of what the landscape looks like and what people how people are perceiving the company right now that that is to me very reminiscent of Sony for the past oh, five years. This is this is uh, it's, I mean this it's is, surreal watching this play out with the roles reversed from the you know eight years ago the last time and that, that trickled down to functionality. That wasn't just a signal of like con- communicating with people like. They weren't listening. They they weren't doing things that people needed, and that's a really worrying sign. I think it's a, a lot. Again, a lot of self perception is is dictating uh, a lot of the moves that you know that specifically that Nintendo and Microsoft are making. Actually, and Sony too. It's just that Sony self self perception seems to be man. We got to catch the fuck up. You know, we can't keep doing what we've been doing. We need to you know change some fundamental things. We need to. Refocus and and you know they've, get they've, back into the good graces of the people that made the PlayStation Two you know the most successful. Well, uh, they, they, of they've, all time. they've bent over backwards actually to work with developers. They're amazing to work with right now. It's awesome. That's and, and I hear that, and I've been hearing that for I want to say yeah. maybe a good nine months or so, maybe a little longer than that. Of but the thing uh, is, third like, parties being like, yeah, Ma- Sony's Microsoft's been there for a long. I mean, the thing is, like, they're both a pleasure to work with now. Yeah. So I'm just I don't want to back pony. I don't want back pony. I like them both. I like them both. I'm sorry. I got. I own a television. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's that cable. you pay for cable. Yes. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Cable. Yes. That's the key differentiation. How you supposed to watch television? I years? like TV. <laughs> whoa, 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 actually, fair question. How much Yo, TV? E- how much? E- email TV? me. I'll send you a link. All right, fantastic. How much I'll TV show you. you the do you torrent? A bunch, okay. most. There you go. I do. I do. Uh, I do an iTunes yeah, uh, season I, pass. I pay for things. I'm not breaking the pass. Yeah, law, but uh, uh, it's going. The yeah. the uh, Top Chef episodes aren't aren't popular enough to get up on the torrent site, so I'll do a season pass. You can buy them on iTunes. That. You can buy them. Yeah. You know, there's a lot. There's a lot of ways. Between Hulu Plus and Netflix, that covers most bases. Yeah. Though. Yep. I, I, I don't have cable. I'm, 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 I'm on my parents' cable. HBO Go, which yeah, I don't think, do. I don't I don't think they know that, but yeah, yeah. Yep. it's okay. But they're not I gotta watching. get my shows when my shows <laughs> come out. <laughs> I gotta see my shows. I want to watch turn on my TV. I want fast and loud. I want these weird bearded weirdos. Yeah. Yeah. Cars. I want to watch. I need that. to know what happens to Arya Stark. <laughs> <laughs> She's done lost her mind. So I want I want to bring the focus over on Phil. Dude, finally, we haven't we haven't talked to Tony. That's good. But we've. Gotten to this I'm gonna again, we're yep. gonna touch Check his face all again. The hateful things people are saying on Twitter to me. You go, you go. I'm gonna put I'm your gonna phone away. No, you put your phone away too. I was just gonna get a handkerchief. <laughs> <laughs> I have a handkerchief. I have a dumb Professor. waiter, and I have a TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's me. Right you now. idiot! I got a handkerchief out of my phone, bitch. You don't know oh. nothing. So, so Phil, this is your first E3 ever. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it is. It's cool. And I gotta say, this is a you know. On, on the main stage at the Sony press conference is a, a unique way to get jumped into a little, coming to yeah. E3. It was interesting. I mean, I'm only I'm only 24. Yeah. Graduated from college last year. Uh, started a company before graduating, and then here I am at E3 for some reason. <laughs> some dumb college kid. So what's but what's your? We were all dumb kids at some point. Still, perhaps. Uh, What's your what's your feeling on on the show so far? Obviously, you know we can't take anything that you or John here says about Sony. Uh, yeah, I mean straight. We're in cahoots, so <laughs> it's dangerous. You, you are you are <laughs> compromised at least uh, a little bit there. But still, I am um, I'm curious, just you know your general perception of the of the show. I mean, I'm excited for Nintendo stuff. Yeah. I've always been excited for Nintendo stuff. I love Zelda and all that kind of stuff. But eventually, after playing games for since I was like three years old, you kind of get bored of that stuff. Yeah. In the same way that uh, for like a first person shooter or something like that to impress me, it has to do something out of the ordinary, something like, you know, super interesting or whatever. Um, And so I'm looking for unique new things. And I mean, it sounds like I'm I'm kissing ass, I guess, but Sony's bringing more of those new things. I I think that was another big thing of the press conferences that a lot of people, you know, commented on was this 
this dichotomy between the, the Sony and Microsoft press conferences of the kinds of games that were being shown that I feel like a lot a broader cross section of people felt like they were getting their itches scratched by the kinds of things that, that Sony was choosing to, to highlight there. That's not to say that those games aren't going to exist on the Xbox no. One, but you know the, the games that got the huge amount of, of, of stage time during the Microsoft press conference tended to be the you know I think it was just the way it was presented in a way because like with Microsoft I felt like they were like well these are here are highly technically proficient like uh, super pretty games sure whereas with Sony I was like I felt like there's some magic still there and they presented them as these like experiences and I well I mean I, it's it's like to your point like saying like here's we're presenting more games that scratch more itches but it also kind of gives this undercurrent of like what the company is trying to intend with like their philosophy of getting games yeah, out there. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing is that like these presentations have to kind of embody that even if yeah. even if ultimately that's not what these systems and are. My like like we can make all these these decisions and declarations about what the Xbox One is and what the PS4 is right now, but until the rubber meets the road, until they're out for a year, two years cuz yeah. again, you look at what the Xbox 360 was at launch, you look at it now, it's unidentifiable as the same system. But seeing Adam Boys up there, hey Adam yep. Boys uh, but like <laughs> that, in that section where we had like the round ring of games, yeah. that, that was my absolute favorite part of that press conference because not only did it, it's like, here's an awesome game that's coming. Okay, it, you keep playing. Here's an awesome game that's coming. And it just like kept going and going because not only was it a whole bunch of games, but it just meant like, fuck, they really want to get this stuff out there. They want to like, you know, sort of fill that gap between like the, you know, really small indie game and the really big triple A. Sure. I just felt like they were trusting things that that could be rather risky from like a, a purely logistical standpoint, like unproven things. Yeah. Uh, and I find that more exciting than being like, well, here's the studio that's been doing very, very successful things for a long time, and here they are doing a sequel to something they've done before. Phil, how are you? How are you finding the uh, the floor of E3? Would you Would you describe it as a face fuck of entertainment? <laughs> <laughs> Would you describe it as yeah, that? I Max? would, Ryan. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. were, you, were you on the floor today? Yeah, I was. I was walking around. Okay. You shouldn't let him touch your face. I don't know if I. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know who you were talking to. That's frightening. Um. <laughs> Speaking of Facebook of entertainment, can yeah. I tell an anecdote from the show floor? Please. Please. Okay. Let it ride. <laughs> Only because you prefaced it that way. Yeah. It's it's very appropriate actually. We were shooting a video tour of the show floor. So it was me and a coworker running around for Game Informer, just like, here's this booth, here's that. And all of a sudden, our video guy is pointing at this dude that has Google Glass on. Oh. Yep. And he was like, oh, you got to go ask him questions about Google Glass. Was it Will? Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, okay. Somebody else asked me about that today. No, it was just some dude with spiky hair, and uh, he had Google Glass on. He was playing something on Nintendo's Was booth. he wearing a kilt? Uh, oh. I wish. So I, w yeah. I go up to the guy, and I start asking him questions. I don't really know a whole lot about Google Glass. And I was like, okay, so how is it? Blah, blah, blah. I'm just you know placating my video guy. And he talked about it for a little bit, and then I said, can I try it on? And he said, yes. So I try these on. I don't know how Google Glass works or anything, so I'm just looking up. I can see kind of the time and stuff. And he starts tapping the side of my Google whatever. <laughs> and he's, he's swiping, and it's like, okay, so there's the weather, there's this. Then he swipes one more time, and literally all I see in the Google Glass is just like a porn ass, <laughs> like <laughs> just bent over like crop perfectly, <laughs> just a fucking female porn ass just right there. And there you were in the future. I was sitting there. I'm getting filmed. I know this is going on the website yeah. and everything. And I look up, and I'm mentally just like, do I respond to this? Like I'm <laughs> like, I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know what the Jerry, hell this is. So it's a horrible situation because you have to get off of the the porn ass because you don't want to give no, it back to he him. he stopped and on the. No, he stopped. Oh, on you the think he's showing it to you? Like no, 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 I don't think he right. realized it. So See, he went to it. That's the thing is, I would not want him to know that I knew right. that well, he was on the point. I brought it up. A uh, gentleman <laughs> wouldn't leave it on that. So you want to? He so left somehow it somehow. Accidentally, he left it. Okay. And so I just said something like, I don't know what the hell I said. The video is probably up on the site now. <laughs> I said, like, I'm looking at something here. <laughs> he kind of realized for a second, like, literally all I'm looking at is just a, a butt. Like, how, big and is, how big is his butt in your in It's your the entire Google Glass thing. It's, it's a crop. Like, it's, 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 I guess I, I, I've never used I have. I don't have any sense of so I, I mean, how it's... it's it's the, it's this is me. It's, it's right here. It's all ass okay. right here in the upper pupil, right corner of my vision. vision. How, how big? It's Google ass. I, I, so I played with I played with Will Smith today for a little bit, uh, yeah. and it's like so. I would say it's like um, it's like uh, it's hard. It's like how do I don't know how to explain how big it is. I guess it's like it takes up maybe like a sixteenth of the vision in your right eye, 
It's a perfectly translucent sort of box. There is only one possible <laughs> reality that he was doing with that, and the answer is super imposing. <laughs> that is the one that this guy is walking around the show floor. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe it's, can, like I put, can I put forth a, a theory about match. about this? About the bug maybe, guy? Yeah, let me. Okay. It's a it's a wild speculation, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out there. Maybe it was like a Cinderella situation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got the picture. Go on, go on. He's got the picture, and he's at E3, and he saw he knows that the woman is is in the show, and he's got to match it up, and he's only got until the end of Crystal the day. Crystal bottom. Yeah, the yeah, I mean, That's the yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Yo, I, have you found a shriveled pumpkin in the parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would feel that there was some, some weight he here. I found her! <laughs> well, he realized I was on it. And so because I, I reacted like it was obvious. I want to see the video. I haven't seen the video yet. But I was like, uh, I'm looking at something here. And he immediately was like, oh, yeah, that's a... Uh, and, and he goes past it. And then he said something like, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a Tumblr feed. So he's subscribing to like a butt Tumblr. And like just <laughs> walking around the show floor, just looking at his butt Tumblr feed. <laughs> You got a new butt. <laughs> yeah. right. So we didn't realize that. I, I was hoping when I walked away, he wouldn't be like, "Dude, you got to cut out the part where you found my butt tumbler." Like, <laughs> he didn't say that, so it's like I'm, I assume that's on GameInformer.com right now. I, me I'm, I'm hoping someone that. on the internet right now, internet, don't let me down. <coughs> Dan Riker butt tumbler dot tumbler dot com. <laughs> Start it up. Make sure it's cropped for Google. Yep. Glass. <laughs> Make sure it's what's the resolution? I, everyone, I want everyone around the table here to say Google Glass. Google Glass. Google Glass. Google Glass. There it is. Google Glass. <laughs> <laughs> Google Glass. Google Glass. There it is. It's Google Glass. I don't care. Google anyone, Glass. It's Google I'm, Glass. I can't, That's okay, not what I, I can't. Can't. dolls. I can't stop thinking. How busy is this dude that he can't <laughs> stop what he's fucking <laughs> doing? He's like, I can't make it to a phone. I can't make it to a TV. I have to look at butts he's like, right hey, now. He's interviewing David Cage, and there's just like a butt right there the whole time. <laughs> That would take the edge off, though. <laughs> David Cage is kind of an intense dude to talk to. There's a butt, or just like just a butt, or just like a picture of Benny Hill making a funny face in the <laughs> upper right-hand <laughs> corner. <laughs> My view the entire time, like that, might make it easier to <laughs> just well, talk. To. Looking down, trying to get it over his. That's yeah, yeah, trying to do it in this. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. William Shatner's terrifying vision of a tech war-based future. <laughs> <laughs> We are having dreams pumped this into our eyes. This is the second eyes. time I want to say in a month that Tech War Dream. The USA show from 1994. So the hit novel series by William Shatner. <laughs> oh, I only know the USA show. A game. Officially yeah. off the rails right now. Yeah. Yeah. I only know the show because he went on Raw to promote that, and Jerry Lawler beat him up because he was starring, promoting uh, Tech War on Raw. Starring Greg Evigan, if memory serves. One, wow. one of the two dads. You okay. do run a of my two dads. Of my two dads fame, yeah. Stacey Keys. It was part of the lineup where they had like Tech War and the the new Knight Rider. They were on like Saturday nights at (laughs) at not a real time. (laughs) (laughs) At 13 o'clock. 13 (laughs) o'clock, right. (laughs) On Channel Blue. Like, night in the station. But uh, I feel like I, I don't know. I feel like the Google Glass stuff. Google Glass. Google Google Glass. Google Glass. 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 I can almost do it. Google Google Glass. Glass. It's It's a shitty name. I don't like it. Um, should just say but I feel like it's like the beginning of you know downloading images on the internet, right? Like this is your first iteration of this, where all it can be is a little tiny image that's in the upper right. You know, when I it took me 30 minutes in 1997 to download a JPEG of Cindy Crawford or whatever. Uh, we were you know, same thing. Like we are like, we are going to uh, get our full widescreen Cindy Tumblr ass. Uh, butt Tumblr. But I'm sorry, Butt Tumblr. <laughs> yeah. Riker, butt See, to me that means something com. else that we're not going to get into. Buttdreams.tumblr.com <laughs> on this on this show. Dirty pops. Yeah, I did it. I got it. I worked it in. I did it. I was waiting. That was so smooth. I almost feel like I should just cut the cord on the whole thing here now. Yeah, that but, was it. Uh, we had a good run. Now that we got Dirty Pop in out, sync. out of the way. Coming back. John, how's your E3, man? You guys uh, just shipped The Last of Us. We yeah. did. I hear well, some people like it. Yeah, yeah. One or two. How do you feel about that? Holy crap! We left a lot of it. Just we left it all on the field. That yeah, one. that was a rough getting in line. But so having everyone just come out so positive for it, it's uh, well, it's it's, it's, it's interesting insane. to me because I, I've talked to, to Patrick uh, uh, extensively about this. Is is how much it feels like a you know it does not in a lot of ways feel like a uh, a Naughty Dog game insofar as 
there are just there are tonal things about it. There are mechanical decisions that feel very deliberately against like what one would expect from a Naughty Dog game. Would, would you say that's fair to say that like that's a that yeah. was a underlying challenging ourselves was yeah top priority with us because you know we we didn't want people to pick it up and feel like oh this is like a reskin of Uncharted. Right. We wanted to feel like no this is something new. This is something special. And. I just acquired butttumblr.com. Sorry, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> it, pr- it was available. I was about to admonish you for getting nope, at your I'm, phone there, but you're I've doing got God's work over done. there. Wait, yeah. you didn't get the actual really Tumblr. Did? You got butttumblr.com. I bought butttumblr.com. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be a subdomain. <laughs> yeah, so then you get oh, a subdomain. But, right. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. Like Dan Picard Glass. Yeah. <laughs> butttumblr.com. Yeah, website forthcoming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Going to make good on that? Oh, yeah. I own so many domains that just have nothing I, on I believe them. Uh, uh, what's going in the toilet.com. <laughs> I bought the last time I saw you. <laughs> yes. That's right. You and I both spent upwards of $30 the last time we hung out on bad domain names. <laughs> we, we, started drink, we started drinking and ended with a lot of domains. <laughs> that's, that's, I, I that's own fartpatrol.com. What's that? I own fartpatrol.com. <laughs> fartpatrol.com? <laughs> Tell me is that it. is there a let's, hyphen or is that talk, one word? Let's talk yeah. after right, the show. Get, get out of the show. I feel like we have like a me. web ring forming right now. Fart patrol. You didn't listen to somebody say it. <laughs> Not even a joke. <laughs> <laughs> They're on the I, 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 I'm imagining like those people with those like plastic sausages, and they're like, "You guys, <laughs> you go on a fart patrol. Did you fart? Yo, well, no, Yo, motherfucker, did you just fart? You're on what? No, you don't need that. You just got the, the I'm device. R- it's I'm writing you up. Everyone has to be on the fart patrol <laughs> until their 25th birthday. Is that anything? Good? <laughs> when I was a it's, kid, I was not a joke. Fart patrol just officer. Come on. Oh my god. <laughs> What's it's like the Israeli army, you know, everyone serves <laughs> at <laughs> some point. <laughs> serves on what again? <laughs> in, in <laughs> the fart <laughs> patrol. <laughs> it's oh. not a joke. Fart patrol. It's not. <laughs> fart patrol is <laughs> a <laughs> serious <laughs> business. I yeah. can't do people saying that. <laughs> What's funny now is every time I read one of your, like, amazing editorials, gonna I'm going to be like, all I'm going to see is fart patrol. <laughs> <laughs> like, all I'm going to see is like, who is this guy? Byline for you. <laughs> what, what? Owner, owner and proprietor. <laughs> fart patrol. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear people say it. <laughs> it's one of the few t- sources of true joy I have left in my life. <laughs> if I burn through it one night, I don't know what Wow. Gonna do. Synapse is just going to fry out and just uh, yeah, brain. Let's, let's come back to butt tumbler, you guys. Let's bring it back. <laughs> fart patrol. <laughs> It's always good. It's always oh good. God, it's terrible. I feel it dwindling. All right, I, I want to. We're, we're gonna take a, a little break here, and we're yep. gonna say goodbye to. Just go. Just go. Who was on that shot? You didn't have to say anything. Uh, <laughs> it out I didn't know that. Um, you work it out with me. Uh, so before we're, we'll, we're gonna reset. We're gonna say goodbye to our, our our first panel of specials here, and then we're gonna bring in the giant bomb staff. So. Uh, Everyone at home that's watching, that's stick around. Painful. But before I say goodbye here, I just want to know, like, end of day one, like, what's the thing that's grabbing you the most? Uh, Quantum, Justin McElroy. Quantum Break looks good. I only saw it on videos. Did you see both the TV show and the oh video man. game part of it? It's close enough to FMV to get my... <laughs> oh. Ooh. I just, I wish, you know, this is... After playing uh, American Nightmare, I'm like, this is all I want Remedy to do is yeah. make... My make the TV shows that I like that no one is making. Yeah, that blend like, that with video games. I mean, I, I want to know more about it. There's a lot of questions, but yeah, that's the thing that like has me has me the most excited. And for <laughs> fart patrol, <laughs> you don't say. No. <laughs> Go on. Oh yes, fart patrol. <laughs> yeah. Tell me. This is gonna be like the end of, of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It's just gonna be just just, 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 just staring Dan, off. Just Dan <laughs> carrying me through a plate glass window. <laughs> we do have an interrogation <laughs> room. We do have the interrogation room. We can make room. use of this. I would please, like to be please stop. Go, 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 go. I would say Metal Gear 5 and Saints Ooh. Row 4. Oh, good answer. Saints Row 4, that. right? Looks right? Good. Full mm-hmm. Max Temkin. Uh, Disney Infinity was was Ooh, very cool. Like a lot of like lot of raw potential. Really interesting, weird new stuff. Oh. And... Uh, uh, played uh, uh, right. Splunky on Avita, and that Ooh. was amazing. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go with the uh, dice here. I, I thought Battlefield Four showed amazingly, and then during the press conference, it was like, "Oh, by the way, Battlefront, we're doing that." And I was like, "Oh, this is the best thing ever!" And they're like, "Oh, by the way, Mirror's Edge Two, and I, that, that, that was a legitimate, actual surprise. I was, I was cheering. 
was, 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 ex- too- was ex- I was expecting uh, uh, Mirror's Edge 2, and I'm uh, happy to see it. Happy that it is existing. Uh, I'm not happy Mirror's to see Edge. guns, but other than that, I'm you know I'm, I'm ready for them to take another crap. If, if it was called Mirror's Edge 2, colon, don't worry, the sniper mission isn't there. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, man. It would help. It would certainly help. Dice. And then, Phil, you've just been manning the... the, the yeah, I mean, I haven't booth. had a lot of time to see things. Octodad uh, is my game. Yeah. Show no. And my game. No, Transistor, I think. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Every time I yeah. see that trailer, I get goosebumps, and that's generally how I rate whether I like something or not. I mean, the, what they're showing at E3 is essentially what they showed at PAX East, but what they showed at PAX East, like, to me, but was one of those... Again, my opinion on this is completely corrupted, the relationship that Giant Bomb has with the Super Giant guys being what it is. Uh, I still, like... I, yeah, genuine chills from the art direction, from the music. When you actually play the game, you're like, yeah. wow... That your first blush is, hey, this kind of looks like Bastion a little bit, but then you actually play it like, oh, this is nothing at all like yeah. Bastion. You guys yeah. have come up with this incredible gameplay system, which is, you know, it's referential of other stuff, but just really smartly done. Like, I feel like that game is just putting to work all the talents of that team in some, some really spectacular ways. So, yeah. Phil, if I, if I want to learn more about Octodad, <laughs> where could I find that information? Let me put this plug in here in a non-awkward way. <laughs> Aquaword. 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 Uh, you can go to octodadgame.com. You can also follow us at Octodad Game, and you can like us on Facebook if you use that device, which young kids these days do not. <laughs> Facebook.com backslash Octodad. Game. It's also on butttumblr.com <laughs> slash Octodad or Aquaword Dad. That's what butttumblr.com is going to go to. Are you telling me that at Octodad was taken? I was yes. going to say, is Octodad.com <laughs> taken? There's an Octodad. Octodad Tumblr taken that is horrifying. <laughs> I'll stay with you. You should oh, find it. What would Hold that even on. be? No one. It's a, it's you just butt ruined butt everybody's night. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Classic yeah. Tumblr. You're going to spend the rest of the night looking at it. I didn't get to see too much, but I feel the division really grabbed me in terms of just like the. Like, oh my god, that, that's that feels really like n- new technical possibilities. So like, fuck yeah. Though I want to say I'm really curious to see what Avalanche does with Mad Max. Yes, that's the studio. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. the trailer was cool, but then afterwards when they said Avalanche is doing this, I'm like, okay, in Avalanche yeah. make you know that's a developer that just caused guys making a Mad Max game, fucking sold. Yeah. yeah. I, is there any Mad Max stuff to see at the at E3? Oh, I don't know. I think it's I don't think there's anything. So, yeah. Just a trailer. I think. I mean, like. There's a banner in uh, uh, <laughs> the hall. It's got a QR you can code. Stare or at it. Yeah, look at the banner. It's it's two-sided. Kind of you can talking. look at it from both sides. All right, I'll check it out. Perfect. Perfect. If you look close enough, shine a light good through stuff, it. Man. Butt tumbler. All right, good. Justin McElroy from Polygon.com, Dan Riker from Game Informer, Max Temkin from MaxTemkin.com, uh, or just Temkin.com. I do not own that. Okay. But <laughs> 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 you, you, you own that. Yeah. 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 Sorry, <laughs> Max Tempkin, uh, Mikey Newman from Gearbox, uh, Phil from his own damn self, uh, and uh, John Bellamy from Naughty Dog. Thank you guys so much for coming and joining us here, our first night uh, of E3 Live after hours. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in, uh, let's call it 10, 15 minutes. We'll reset uh, the stage here. We'll bring in the Giant Bomb staff. Obviously, we didn't get a chance to talk about last night's uh, uh, press conferences just yet. So we'll dig into that as well as what everyone's been seeing out on the show floor. So stick around. We'll be back in a few. Bye, America. We clear? No. Okay. Uh, Brian, right. may, may I say it is it is awesome to see you guys back online. And, yes, uh, yeah, glad yeah. you guys I'll were able to put too. this all back together. Yes. I'm so glad we it, didn't stop. It took I'm the wind out of the stop. sails last night. It was a bummer, and you know it ended up uh, killing our ability to do our day zero show, which we always enjoy doing. Cause Bar Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> the, Did you hear him? I just <laughs> he said Far Patrol. I'm gonna, I, I feel like I can workshop material with you. I'm just like Far Patrol. Don't try to don't try to fucking improve it. It's like classic gym. You start putting nuts in there. I'm not into that. You fucking just give me my Far Patrol. Daddy knows what he needs in his Far Patrol. I feel like the, the entire internet tonight is like, oh that guy. I don't know. I don't know about him anymore. I was gonna listen to his, his podcast. My brother, my brother, me. It's it. It me. I listen to that. I, dude, I want to talk about that so little that I will listen to Dan Riker talk about Gold Dust. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness. Let's Let's go talk about Let gold me tell dust. you about Dustin Rhodes. Yeah, dude, I'm in. It's Gold Dust. <laughs> no, I got you. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that was the end. <laughs> One. 
Hey folks, welcome back to E3 2013, day one. Uh, we're wrapping up here after hours on Giant Bomb. Uh, join me, the uh, Giant Bomb staff, Brad Shoemaker, Jeff Gersman, Patrick Klepik, and from the East Coast, Alex Navarro. Alex, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Yeah. Uh, just had some fun talking to our developer friends, and uh, you know, we uh, didn't really get a chance to, to, as a group, discuss uh, yesterday's events at the press conferences. You know, it was uh, yesterday was a dramatic day. A lot of a lot of shit went down. A lot of ups and downs. Yeah, yeah hard swings. Yeah, uh, throughout the day, um, you know, starting off at Microsoft. Starting off at Microsoft. Uh, let's uh, let's let's talk about who was there. Who actually went to uh, Microsoft? I was there. I was there. Brad Schneider was, was, was there. Patrick Clever was, was there. Did you make Jeff it onto the floor? Was I wasn't there. Uh, I didn't. I did not make it onto the floor. Uh, it turns out that I could have like gotten in early if I'd gone to a different entrance, but okay. I didn't find that out until ten minutes before they let people in. So we were looking, you're, we were looking for you. because yeah. you're, you're way in the getting so, right up at the front of a press. So room. I sat in the very back row uh, oh, with Charla. Uh, okay. So. Uh, he and I were in the back, and it was weird sitting next to someone who works at Microsoft. And knew everything that was going to happen. No, it was less yeah. that, and more just like I was sitting there going, mm. uh, about some of that stuff. But uh, no, whatever. Uh, yeah, uh, so that was a that was an inter interesting way to take that in. Some unreal dudes back there, uh, you know, hanging out the back and stuff. So, um, so we're, uh, yeah, let's let's talk about. I guess it's kind of hard to talk about Microsoft without talking about everything else at once, but... Yeah. Um, I feel like you have to compartmentalize. You know, there is there is the games lineup, there's the price. Sure. There's... All these yeah. other... All the other well, stuff. You know, they went into this thing saying that they were going to talk about games and yep. that, that they got, you know, I, I think their feeling was that they had gotten everything else out of the way uh, prior to the show uh, with the, the TV announcement up front and then the clarification on their... Uh, you know, online strategy and that sort of stuff right. afterwards. I think they, they thought that they had cleared up enough to say, like, all right, now let's talk about the stuff that matters, video games. Um, but there was still that dark cloud hanging over a lot of that thing. So uh, so that was pretty crazy, but whatever. I mean, you know, at the same time, they opened up and said, here's a bunch of footage of Metal Gear Solid Five, and it's insane, and Skullface yeah. is Skullface. Like, like I, I only want to bring this up because it was at this conference, not that... Metal Gear Solid Five has anything to do with the Xbox and vice versa, other sure, than yeah. other than Microsoft will paid them a lot of money. Yeah, and 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 Microsoft paid them a lot of money to have the footage at their press conference, probably. But I don't know. I mean, well, who knows what the business terms were? Yeah, I think, I think the money only comes into it at the point where if someone else is trying to get it too, right? If they're battling back and forth, sure, then maybe sure. that happens. Point point being, it'll obviously also be on PS4, if not also the PC. You know, that that game will be around, right. if not the PlayStation but Three. In the context of it being at that press conference, I think it's the coolest thing I've seen at this whole. Thing show so far hmm. like I just I thought it's that game looked crazy I thought it looked just fantastic what you think of Kiefer Sutherland's voice it seemed to fit I yeah. couldn't pick it out like I didn't it didn't yeah. it didn't hit me as oh shit that's Jack Bauer it's just like alright that more or less sounds like something. well you didn't say yeah. damn it which yeah. is the one yeah. thing that Jack sure. Bauer says sure mm -hmm. uh like, he wasn't doing an impression of the David Hayter snake, but right. it sounded like it was in but that same... how much same funnier would it be if he was? Yeah. <laughs> but it was in that same gravelly register, you know, it sounded yeah. fun. Yeah. Uh, but horse cover. Dynamic horse cover. Yeah. Horse cover. Yeah. Horses. But see, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm genuinely excited about the idea of that kind of stealth in an open world. It, with it, the it Metal Gear weirdness on top of it. You, you, there's nothing else that looks quite like it, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. You know, and this is the, you know, this is the, the game that brought us, like, Jeep stealth. Sure. One of those other trailers sure. or something. So and and as a as a lapsed Metal Gear fan of sorts, like the idea that this could be like a direct prequel to the first Metal Gear mm. is kind of exciting from a story standpoint. Did did yeah. anyone watch the extended trailer that went up to I think either today or, or late yesterday? No. So it's it's all the footage from from the conference, but with a whole bunch of torture scenes thrown in in addition. Ah, ah. So if you want to watch some really yeah. nasty torture huh. stuff, there, there was there some of that go. in the in the they previous added a lot stuff more. they showed. They added uh, a lot more. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Who doesn't like a little torture? It's hot stuff. Me. Don't lie to me. I didn't like it so much. Um. Yeah, so I don't know. I, th I thought I thought Metal Gear. It seemed like that was the it's the, crazy in, the, in a the cool way. One of the main critiques that I I saw uh, folks making about the Microsoft stuff was just the severe level of violence that was that you know the the press conference seemed kind of shot through with. I think you know Rise is planning about that was like so last year. <laughs> I don't even. 
think it was just it was just the volume of violence. It was just that like there wasn't much variety to it. You know, it was just like if they were showing you know kind of different indie games or whatever, they were showing those for like ten well, seconds, and then there was like five minutes of shit exploding. You know, it, 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 it's the die. same press conference where they showed Project Spark. Yeah, I mean, it's not and, and it, below, sure. It seemed know, it seemed yeah. clear yeah. though that like. The, the games that they were putting a, a lot of uh, right, focus like, on yeah. were the very great. We talked about yeah. this in the last segment. Here was the, you know they're the super graphically impressive games from developers that you know that have done big games in the past, and it happens that those games are falling into yeah. uh, a certain. It's not. It's not that there weren't maybe some some more inclusive games involved. Is that yeah. the balance was off maybe or yeah. weighted? The balance was maybe weighted toward the kind of hyper violence. Uh, for me, it was more that the games. Hyper violence, like, and the problems with that aside, like the games even were hyper violent. Like Rise just looked boring. Like, yeah, like, it's, Rise it's, it's, just didn't look like a very good game. Right, like, like a. It's not enough to just set it in an interesting setting when you just apply like oh, D Day. Like it didn't look like there's like you know what yeah, I mean. Like yeah. it felt like they were just making World War Two, but like well, we'll just shift it to a different setting so that it's not a World War Two game. And you've got shields. Yeah, and, and like so and all these scripted, like, all these scripted like, kills. Yeah, like like melee combat with button prompts in it. It's not doing yeah. much for me. Remember just, when that was a Kinect like, game? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So I guess that's not anymore, right? Yeah. Sounds yeah. like. I mean, no. you know, who knows? It, it could be both by the time it's done. Yeah. It could never come out. Who does? <laughs> who could say? It was 2011 that that game first showed up, right? Yeah, Patrick yeah. and I saw oh, it, yeah. uh, an Xbox tech demo today, specifically designed to show you how you could use a controller and connect gestures at the same time. So How'd that work? So not great. What? what why do they need a tech demo for? I mean, that's it was it was a very rudimentary first-person shooter. You can just do it. It's you yeah. don't need it. Well, it was it was just a, it was a really basic first-person shooter. I mean, Steel Battalion did that. How you did it exceedingly <laughs> well? Like, why would they need to show that this uh, is even obviously. possible? I mean, yeah, Connect's hardcore game arrived like a year and a half ago. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, like they, like the one of the bits they showed was like this simple shooter that you like tilt the controller up, the Connect text that you tilt with the controller up. Rather than using a gyroscope, the Connect knows that, yeah. and then a shield goes. That up. part worked huh. okay. And the but other the one was like, hey. Uh, Detect the enemies around you by touching your your you know like the, the like side of your like, head. So yeah, like, like oh X-ray, like all like, the things you know. Weird. None of that is like interesting. The way they were applying it, I don't know if that's necessarily interesting. Any way you would apply it, but it seemed very much like, hey, this stuff. This maybe a maybe bit there's yeah maybe there's potential to this well, if, the, if, the, if the right game developer sure. gets a hold of it. The disappointment for me was the part where you, you dodged to get out of the way of a missile, and it looked like there was just as much latency on this one as there was on the first Connect. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they didn't, I mean, they didn't really show any Connect stuff during the press conference, so. Yeah. For having, for knowing that a lot of that, uh, the price, at least probably $100, is determined by a device that they didn't want to convince you that you really needed. Right. That's, that's a but, little disappointing. But they don't, you know, I think the people buying the system in the first year don't need convincing of that peripheral. They sure. Because they don't care. Sure. Um, It'd be fair. I think the UI navigation with that thing looked pretty awesome. You know? mm -hmm. like, yeah. I mean, Apple proved what, five, six years ago how effective, real simple, intuitive, gesture-based UI navigation is. You know, if it works, great. Yeah. Uh, what else? I mean, they showed that new Halo game, which was it was ridiculous. Uh, Master Chief with his tattered cloak in the desert. Right. Uh, but uh, you know, it, like at least that's a different look for Halo. Um, big, crazy. Yeah, it was probably the first Halo trailer I've ever seen where it did not start, and then within the first five seconds, I was able to go, that's a Halo game. Right. You know, they, they at least kind of rope-a-doped you a little bit. Maybe that's just going to be like Shadow of the Colossus, but Halo. <laughs> you know, there's like, ah. Last See, I'm not going to read We're too much into, like, what that means sure. for the actual game, because, you know, that's it's just exploding journey. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's it's... If it's going to be, yeah, if it's just gir Journey with Guns or what it actually is. This, this game is no longer machine gunless. Oh, you beat me to it. I was trying to work it out in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Monster. He's Monster. just quicker. He here. is. I know. Um, gosh, what else? I mean, you, you Killer Instinct, finally. Finally, the free to play fighting thing. game. Well, so it sounds like that that's not the only way that's going to be offered. Um, that they're, you know, the demo version will, will be kind of freely playable with one character and you can buy characters but you can also buy it at retail yeah and get the whole thing wait how many characters is the retail gonna have uh, i assume a full roster i don't i don't yeah. know um but do they say what full retail is, is i think full $60? retail is, is the joystick because they're they're partnering uh, okay. with mad cats to make uh, a okay. stick so 
but what I mean, presumably at that point, it would be here is the joystick and a code for the game okay. or a disc if it is. I don't know. You but know. we're talking retail, like disc game, not like twenty dollars XBLA game, right? Like it is a full release, correct? I, that, I'm I'm unclear on that okay. part of it, but okay. uh, but I guess you know it, it's not it is not purely a free to play fighting yeah. game. It sounds like that's just one avenue they're exploring, or, uh, sort least, of like Namco is with yeah, Tekken Revolution, yeah. sort of like. Right. Or I guess the, I guess the DOA Five U. I guess the point to make is that it's not the Marvel Heroes situation of it costs two hundred dollars to get everything in this game. I it, I mean. I don't know if they're going to price it. Not. If they price it like that, that'd be real fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah. So we can only assume that they yeah. wouldn't do that. Sure. But at the same time, if you're buying that joystick, it will probably be $140, $150 for that package. Yeah. Um, I played a little bit of that. I don't know. Like, it's... it's I, don't, I don't know who that's for. Like... People seem to get real excited about it, but you're right. I don't... I, I like, I don't... I never... I didn't know anybody growing up that was way into chaos. I was talking to a couple people. I was talking to, like... John Carlo and a couple yeah. other people. It was just like, I think the feeling with us is the people that are really excited about a new Killer Instinct game don't remember Killer Instinct very mm. well. Maybe. Or, you know, that, that was always a game that was just kind of like goofy fun. Yeah. And it was then, a product of its time. And, yeah, and like, the, 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 the people who got really good at it were people you didn't want to ever speak to. <laughs> They were not good people. No. It was also like you know that was back when like it was the Ultra sixty four like Cruising USA was an impressive like still piece is of technology still and is. game. Uh, I can also see it being you know a certain generational break. Also, sure. If uh, you were nine also, when Killer Instinct came out, you were like, "Yo, man, TJ Combo is sick." Yeah, it was yeah. also super easy to get into. Saber Wolf is a wolf. It says in his name. <laughs> Fulgore. They didn't spell it W U L F, did they? They did. It's that saber wolf because okay. it's rare. So. That, that right. game had a skeleton in it. Yeah, it was a fighting skeleton. Just a straight up skeleton. It was a fighting skeleton. Uh, yeah, uh, the the I don't you know. I did a combo breaker. It's it's a property that Microsoft owns yeah. with yeah. rare. And yeah, the people have, the people have, have been have kind of clamoring for in the but, but also way. like yeah. Microsoft has grasped at like how do we take advantage of this rare stuff that we paid an insane amount of money for. Grab by the ghoulies, too. <laughs> Solves it. That's it. Yeah. I got, I got, I got Full some stop. ideas. I yeah. got some ideas. I got one if idea. Wanna, if you want to know. One idea. It's the only idea that matters. Yeah. yeah. Viva Pinata 3. Yeah. Done. Yep. You want to, you want to, like, turn the narrative around on Xbox One. It's yep. Cool. Yep. Hey, it's it's right making, there. It's right Viva Pinata 3. Three. It's right there, Microsoft is staring you in the face. But they would do it and then be like, Yo, and you it's want, made of paper mache. If you want Fudge Hog, it's you got to pay us four bucks. They would probably somehow find a way to screw that up <laughs> at this point. You would pay four dollars for a Fudge Hog. Just for a Fudge Hog. Okay. Though. First Fudge Hog's free. All right. Okay. How many Fudge Hogs does one need anyway? Mm. All of them. Well, like a, I mean, a few. You want to? I mean, you want them breeding. So you need it, what two? Not the way I do it. Okay. Fair enough. There's an efficiency in numbers. I'll tell you about it later. Patrick, what was your feeling on the on the, the Microsoft press conference? Uh, I mean, they went for the big swings, and they had a couple of, like, you know, indie stuff so they could kind of checkbox it, but it didn't feel as genuine as... Uh, you know, you, f- you feel good for the guys that, that had that chance. Like, Cappy, great developer, great yeah. games. Like, glad they had that opportunity. But it, it felt, and you know, like the Minecraft announcement was sort of weird. Like, just like, hey, we locked it up again. Um, it just seems like a real natural, like, of course you did. Right. Yeah. You know, it sold so well in 360. Like, yeah, didn't do it. Sure. And like, of and like, and of like dur- during the press conference, like as they were announcing the Minecraft thing, uh, Notch was complaining on Twitter about how they don't do enough outreach to indies. So, like, when you have that guy trolling that company why it's just it was it just felt like they were checkboxing as opposed to uh you know they still have a huge communication problem with independent developers i mean i just feel like there's a big difference between having phil spencer come out in a cappy shirt and having you know adam come out and talk like bring out all these different developers and all these different games all at the same time you know it just it felt like the microsoft thing felt a little bit more just like basic lip service well you know i mean they're but they're also they have a sweary game you know like there's there's there is that um you know, so I, I think that what they showed was not without merit. You know, I think a lot yeah. of people are, are, are really want to just sweep it all under the rug and say, yeah, "Fuck them and everything they're doing." And I, you know, I get that to a certain extent, but you know, I, I think some of those games will probably be pretty good. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, I mean, you saw Titanfall, didn't you? Yeah, Titanfall seems awesome. Yeah. Uh, so the the demo for that was really really good. Yeah, and they they locked that up. I mean, that's 
You know, the, the, the way Respawn puts it is that that's them just wanting to focus on one platform, like they're going to outsource uh, the 360 version and, and not do it themselves, so they're kind of just focusing on, on Xbox One and, you know, PC, which, you know, obviously those, that'll kind of come for free at some point, but, uh, you know, that that's still a, that's a, a really big get for Microsoft. That's them, them saying, like, hey, the new game from this these ex-Call of Duty guys. Right that people seem super keen on knowing more about that, by the way, looks f pretty fucking incredible, uh, is, is coming to their thing. And, uh, and that, that's big, you know? Um, when I, when I pre-ordered one of those during the Ubisoft press conference, uh, I had oh, some, you had to go to that. I had some time to kill, you know? Um, <laughs> I heard the Wi-Fi was great. The Wi-Fi was outstanding, you guys. Oh, my God. It was just so fast. I could get on Amazon. I could click those buttons and order that thing. It was just, it was terrific. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess before we jump to, to Ubisoft, we talk about uh, EA, right? Yeah, yeah, EA was after that. So we had talked on our, our Sealed Envelope podcast about some expectations, and one of the things was about a Star Wars game being yeah. at the EA press conference. And, Patrick, I think you I think specifically... we said Battlefront we said, dice, which is yeah. not you said, like a You said Battlefield, bet. you said Battlefront. I think they should have just said, fuck you, and they should have done the EA thing and said, we care about our brand more, and called it Star Wars Battlefield. <laughs> yeah. This, what, is, what is Battlefront? But it was almost exactly the, like, the as far as the trailer was, what we had talked about yeah. there. Yeah, except it wasn't, they didn't give Blur a million dollars, they gave him, like, 250k yeah for you know 15 seconds and they get to get out there and just get like the real basic star wars shit out of the way it's like it's a hoth level fuck you yeah yeah of course there is star wars game. game resetting it. star wars battlefront yeah the star wars battlefront <laughs> the gritty reboot of star wars battlefront uh so i did not catch the uh, ea press conference i was here doing other crazy stuff when that was going down. It so was a good show. I liked their stage setup. Me and Vinny were talking about that. They had moving screens and all these lights and shit. Yeah. Drake was there. Yeah. yeah. Not, well, John, not John Drake. Drake Drake. Yeah. It was a lot more exciting than last year's. Last year's was like a funeral show. It was just like John yeah. Mattel looks super down. Yep. They brought out the Star Wars, you know, Old Republic. And like they brought up the Bioware guys. And man, he just looks sad talking about that game. And it was just like, it was a bummer. This year was not a bummer at yeah. all. Yeah. It was expected. I mean, they announced a lot of stuff you would expect. I mean, they played it really do, safe. You know, everything well, yeah. looked okay, but everything was solid. Well, I think yeah. I, you know. I think, and I think some of that stuff is is definitely better than okay. Like you know, like I you know, you were with me for some of that stuff when we saw Titanfall. And, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so I, I stuck around and played some Battlefield. Too, right? I think Need for Speed looks fucking killer. Yeah, like it, it, looks it, nice. it plays really well. Um, the the stuff they're doing with uh, kind of putting the the multiplayer single player they're doing what everyone else is doing putting the single player and multiplayer in the same thing sure uh, but they're doing and it the in cameras it. zoom out from the map right and like oh my god is everybody um, like eight Ubisoft games did right yes oh, at some point. I think at some point like the Ubisoft game is gonna, is gonna pull out and then like Need for Speed will be over here and then it'll keep <laughs> pulling out and then Destiny will be you know just you'll be able be to this. see all of the online connected single player multiplayer right that's gonna it's gonna be the multiverse and then then gaming will then will have something they'll yeah, like make their own platform right yeah the only the only big disappointment about EA for me was there was not a single new IP announced of any kind you know like even the fan service was the you know as yeah, mirror as mirror revisiting like revisiting a, like a, a darling but still something that's been around more before, plants for you know? zombies more yeah. peggle like to, like to be fair they're, you know Wars. they're going through a management transition maybe now is not the time but then again it's a new hardware generation so I would think now is the time well I, you know I think that they probably yeah, I don't know. I, I I would suspect that for launch, you know, some of these games talking about launch or early 2014 or something like that, they're going to go with the games they can get done. Yeah, and if they're sure. going to do anything sure. on a grander scale than yeah. that, it'll probably yeah. come a little later. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you know, I, I'm with you. You know, I think Mirror's Edge, that's a cool announcement. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. You know, maybe that game will be cool. Maybe not. It's, it's hard to really know with, with what they showed. But, you know, it certainly, like, aesthetically look, look neat. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Did you get any impression that there was any, like, jockeying for position? Uh, who's going to be the new CEO of EA? <laughs> Can't, you don't, they're, they're not telling us. They're not, talk they're not talking. Right. Okay. Inside source. They're not talking. Thank you. She knows. She's not going to say. All right. Well, um, 
I, I didn't hear anything one way. All, all literally, all I heard out of the EA press conference was Star Wars and Mirror's Edge. Yeah, I mean, those, those were you know, seemed to be. The oh, you missed Peter Moore came out. Oh. And, well, well, so before the before they even started streaming, there was like this weird moment where Peter Moore came out and just started addressing the crowd, like, "Hey guys, we're gonna go live on TV pretty soon, so everybody, you know, smile, let's have a good time, you know, get your, get your hair out of the way, you know, like this weird like was, mention people by name stuff that just yeah. came across as super." Gross. I, I was just looking at it. Was like, like warming yeah. up the crowd? He was, yeah, he was, he was warming absolutely up warming up the crowd. Like, it was, it was, it was where's Steven Tatula? You got two minutes to file. You're in this press conference. was disappointing story. <laughs> 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 I'm aware of your but existence. Also, but, also, but, also, but also, he was pretty good at it. Like, uh, yeah. more is good at that stuff. Sure. Like, he, Crash what you guys are telling me sounds folks. fantastic. What you're yeah. telling me sounds yeah. like, yeah, all right. Yeah, it sounds like Peter Moore. As he was doing it, I was just like, this just seems kind of gross. I don't know. Uh, it wasn't streaming, so you had to be in the room. You had to know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, Frank Jabot was out there for a little while. Just He seemed stately. He seemed like he just got out there, got it done, mm. and left. Yeah. He seemed like a pro. Yeah. yeah. Stately is um, a good word for it. But yeah, you know, I, I think Drake will probably be just be the next CEO. <laughs> yeah. He likes FIFA. So. It makes sense. Yeah. They need someone who likes FIFA. with the FIFA brand identity. Ultimate team. I mean, Aaron Paul are just going to fight <laughs> right, it out. Yeah. So did he, I know Eric Paul was there. Did he come out on stage? And yeah, he, he came out. Oh, yeah. He came he out and he did the he did the he did the fucking oh thank you like as he was walking out like he got the applause like oh yes. <laughs> but like like the full on like, dip in the uh, knees yeah like halfway yeah. down it was like, really the, and that was right after it was he, really actorly yeah okay. that's yes. right after he got done telling us how he's a gamer just like us sure so you know whatever I believe him sure whatever. he probably is. is. I, I, I believe 100% that Drake loves FIFA because Lil Wayne was out the year before and he said he played, or you know, he, on the video, he said oh, he played FIFA oh, and they're on the same record label. <laughs> when Drake says that, every time I look at FIFA, all I think about is the development team behind it and how hard they must work to make those games. They started from the bottom, now they hear. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a really boring way to play FIFA, to be honest with you. Just thinking about game development. Yeah, I, I, about the developers. Man, just the, about the human cost. Like the al- work. Yeah, the I don't alternative. Want to the human cost of Madden when I'm playing Madden because that just makes me really sad. Not want to play Madden. Anymore. But the alternative of that is to think about soccer. Who the fuck wants to do that? <laughs> Europe. Yeah, Europe. Like that's a place. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think they had a, a pretty solid lineup. Yeah, kind of safe. But uh, after playing a, a few of those games, like that, that looks cool. That stuff seems good. I'd, I'd say similarly, you know, uh, Ubisoft, and again, Jeff was the only one whose uh, whose invite stood <coughs> for, all, for, for <laughs> Ubisoft. It sound like all others rejected. Well, no, I mean, I had heard from other people that were there that even that it was still an, a overpacked, overbooked house. You know, it, it is. It is. Center, it, is it has always been every year. I actually, yeah, I somehow ended up in the very front row of Ubisoft. <laughs> uh, some bladder area. And uh, you're in the fun zone. Yeah, they had the plastic sheets out there. <laughs> Pull those out. The whole thing. All the yeah. mallets coming out. Yeah. But that really felt like watching watching the Ubisoft press conference. A lot of that felt like last year's Ubisoft press conference. It pretty much was. Uh, I mean, I, you know, Watch Dogs made a huge impact last year, and they they showed more of that, and that stuff seemed super slick. Like I, I liked that presentation, uh, but it, I felt like a lot of a lot of that stuff that that Ubisoft was spending a lot of time on was super iterative, like, hey, we had one of these out last year, guess what? We're putting out another one of these this year. Well, like, I mean, we're going to have this new Assassin's Creed game, and, you know, we're going to show you a lot of this new Assassin's Creed game, but it's going to be identifiable as Assassin's Creed game. You know, they have a lengthy uh, Just Dance commercial. Yeah. Basically, you know, barely a, a trailer really well, in I mean, the middle of that. The weird rabbits TV show thing that they showed, which like, okay, it's not a game, but that was that was where I ordered the. That was where I. That's <laughs> so you said. All right. I was like, I just wasn't even sure where I was at that point. Was well, like, I, mean, I mean, whoa. On top of that, they literally, I mean, you know, they showed like their 97th Splinter Cell Blacklist trailer, you know, because they've been showing that for like, what, three years now, basically? Indecipherable. Yeah, totally indecipherable. They showed yet another Rayman demo, which should have been out, you know, three months ago. Sure, sure. Yeah, I guess the, 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 there's a case to be made for. Yeah, they actually did show some of the same games and they closed, that they showed yeah. last year. And they closed with yet another third person action American paranoia near future dystopia game like they it's I'm not the point. same one as last year but you know it was the same basic you know closer uh yeah no i thought it was it's it's weird to me how similar i feel like the notes being hit by those two games yeah. what's going on in france that they're so convinced that 
it's falling apart. American no, it's this, but, but it's, that's what it is. But it's it's what's weirder is it's like it's this French fantasy yeah. of like, <laughs> like oh, oh, oh wouldn't it be great if all this stuff happened to the if states? The oh is they could get on the money so. and then they would eat the money because Americans <laughs> they eat that money. So these games are set. Money in, virus. These games are set in French America, is what you're saying. Uh, yes, okay. yes, the French fantasy of of what America is like. Or topic French Canadian French America. Yeah, or it's French Canadian. It could be. Yeah, yeah. Either, yeah. either one. No, no idea. Hard, hard to say the source. They're but yeah, whatever. Like, they're a multinational company. Guys, watch Dogs. It's going to be a pretty awesome game. Yeah, sure. it seems yeah. all right. Yeah, uh, I, I, I like And the division looks great. And the division too. looks really neat. cool as well. Yeah. I, I guess that's that's the ultimate bottom line. Is like, okay, yeah, thematically, there's some some weirdness in the similarity of their dystopian view of of the future. But those games also both look really really sharp. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so like I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna fault Ubisoft for that part, but I feel like outside of of those specific moments in that press conference, uh, a lot of that stuff just I felt perfunctory. It felt like mm. I, I well, and then like the yeah. like the thing is that, like Ubisoft sp- specifically, and this happens at EA too. Where like when you get like the CG trailer, you're like, all right, well this game's gonna show up at yeah. some other press conference. Like, Ubi- and Ubisoft specifically was both. Was Watch Dogs as soon as they didn't show Assassin's Watch Dogs Assassin's being Creed, played, like yeah. you got the boring CG trailer. You knew it was going like, to be all funny. right. Well, I guess the gameplay demo is in. That's two fair. Hours. At least the CG trailer didn't crash. Yeah. Well, it's next gen. Yeah. It's Live demo, folks. Mm-hmm. Year of technical difficulties. Yeah, nothing yeah, worked say, right like, this year at all. No one was spared something. No, even, even Nintendo, yeah. their Ustream couldn't <laughs> even watch it. Yeah. yeah. So. What you, got, what you guys think of, awesome of the crew issues. before before we move on? Well, I, I think the crew looks interesting. I, I want to give that. That a, does actually look really yeah, neat. Yeah, I want to I want to play that. I, I actually I like the car design, like the when they're doing the off road version of this Camaro and you know yeah. the, the big knobby tires and spare tire stuff. I, I thought yeah, that's. I, I guess I'm cool not look. I'm not quite sure. I'm clear enough on. It's uh, every uh, it's every driving game in one driving game. It's well, like guess Motorstorm, what? Need for Speed, Burnout. It's like four it. player Chase HQ, but then the camera's like, and you're like wait, it's like a billion player Chase <laughs> HQ. Uh, oh. oh, yeah. Other than the part where it zoomed out, where they did their fun camera trick there, yeah. like the rest they of love the rest of what move. I yeah. Is it, it a fun camera trick when you've done it three times in the same in, press? Conference? Yeah, in the same press conference. Yeah, <laughs> East Gimmo loves that thing. He loves it. Uh, but yeah, I guess the the rest of that just I, I, it didn't click for me. I, sure, it wasn't clear to me like what was special about that game because I feel like at a certain point, yeah, that online connected driving game experience. I feel like we've kind of had that for a little while here. Like maybe maybe the scope and the significance of it is going to expand with something like this. But uh, other than that, I don't know that the. the I think, I think it's got it. potential, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. The geography was also really huge. Like, the, like you could see, like the whole United States. Like, I, you know, obviously you're only jumping into parts of it, but like right. that, the scale of it seemed yeah. ambitious. You, you mean the mountain states? Yeah, the geography was, let's say, a little off. <laughs> let's Again, that's French the play, America. The placement of Las <laughs> yeah. Vegas. Fudging uh, it a little bit. He was. Dri- it looked like America drawn by an eight-year-old. I don't think any of us, any of us, could draw America as well as that America was drawn. Yeah, see, I mean, in a particularly well, we, we, like, we all got paper still. out right now and drew America. And I'm saying people in France get much better edu- edu- education yeah. than we do. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so French eight-year-olds, yeah, yeah they're totally specific French okay. eight-year-old. Got it. Um, well, I guess anything else? Any other thoughts about about Ubisoft? Jerry Cantrell was there. Oh, he cut. I missed that part. They did. They opened with. They opened with Rocksmith. Rocksmith. Yep. I don't just, like that he cut his ponytail. And it was just like he just he just played that song, and yeah. then he seemed only vaguely aware as to whether his band was even in the game or not when they asked him. <laughs> right. Well, so she was reading his teleprompter parts. I think at some point. Oh, <laughs> it was a little. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, I don't know. That'll happen. Got a little weird. Yeah. And then uh, Sony. Yeah. Yeah. Sony, common. where they showed some games and, none, but not a ton of new big games. No, for there the were order. exclusive. Yeah, yeah the order. Yeah, so like, it's kind of interesting. I, I that was Don's maybe. first console. That game. was one of the most on a on a technical level. That was one of the the demos or you know whatever, whatever that thing was. Right, it was in it engine. Sort of, it sort of looked like Left for Dead. Yeah, that that's kind of the impression yeah. I took away. From like I, I don't know what to take away from it mechanically, but I. Fucking love the aesthetic. Yeah. I I really really enjoy the hints of the world that they seem to be building and presenting there. And I just thought the characters looked really really good. Yeah. yeah, it was just that one of those moments of like there was a couple of those where it wasn't just the 
uh, projected scale of the thing that was impressive. It was just like in that minute detail, like wow, that is technically very impressive. They just these characters are they're convincing me in a way that I don't think a character could on uh, current hardware. Animation sure. is coming a long way, and like you can tell the different studios that are investing and uh, utilizing animation because that is like a key differential uh, with a lot of these a lot of these games. Um, there were other there, games. There were other games. Yes, there were several other <laughs> games. I mean, a lot yeah. of it was like third-party stuff that will probably be multiplayer. Yeah, I mean, they, they checked in with the stuff they announced back in February, and yeah. I think some of the, like, all that stuff looks like it's probably okay, but you know, it looks pretty standard. You know, it's okay. like, a, another, like another kill zone game, not necessarily. Hey, at least uh, it was blowing quick. Minds, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like yeah, infamous yeah. kill zone. Like they didn't. Like, Infamous, I was I was ready for like you know the twenty looks, minute right. twenty five minute I'm, demo. I'm more sold on Infamous. Way more. Yeah. Second song. I, I think I am too. Like the, was the, on the story f- stuff yeah. seems like kind of cool. I but, saw yeah. so I saw a solid ten minute gameplay demo of that today. Yeah. Like, being played in front of me. Uh, there's an interview dump truck on the site if you want to hear more. But the coolest thing about it is so Infamous two had two different possible endings that were very different. Yeah. Like can we talk about it? Can sure. I say it? Yes. One of the I mean, endings. A years there past, was a good right? ending and a bad. Well, ending. One of the endings. Oh. One of the endings. The main character from both of those games dies. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, well, you must have picked one of those endings to consider canon and continue on with this game, right? And they were like, yeah, we looked at the trophy data to see what most people did. Huh. Hmm. And the vast majority of people picked the ending where he dies, so we decided to go with that ending. So he's dead. The, that's, huh. so that's, awesome. that's the shared yeah, reality. It's, it's a. It's a like they went. Huh. They literally just took the consensus and. Went with it, so that character, unless they you know bring back Zombie Cole or something, he's he's gone. They've got a new Give main character. Ideas, God damn you, uh, piece of shit. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll, we'll they won't. Bring back the original design. Does that mean PlayStation All Stars is a prequel? Point right. point being, like they came up, they came up with a new main character. It's set oh, seven Cole. years later. Like you know, it's like here's here's the world seven years after this ending happened. Hmm. Um, so you know, uh, it, it's it's refreshing that they felt the liberty to kind of take a sharp left turn away from what they had done before. But again, technically, what what was shown during the press conference for Second Son really impressed me. Yeah. You know, the, the Nirvana cover coming on was a, a little on the nose for your yeah. Seattle set. Yeah. Especially uh, a guy wearing tight jeans yeah, and your, knit cap. And, your your and counterculture. I don't, think, I don't think that was a cover. I'm pretty sure it was a cover. It didn't sound know. right. Really? It didn't sound quite right. Yeah, though, it was a little, bit, a little bit off. I had mentioned Nirvana and, and I, I had been uh, corrected earlier on that, but... Uh, but yes, that song, whether it was Nirvana or Three not, Three Doors Down. Uh, yes, you know, popular current 2013 yeah. bands uh-huh. like Three Doors Down. Yeah. Um, Temple of the Dog. That notwithstanding, yeah, I really, really did. liked what right. what that game showed, and yeah. I Motorhead. And I did not even necessarily click with the first two uh, the first two games uh, as strongly as you know, Brad. Yeah, I, yeah. mechanically, I think some of that game looks looks pretty interesting. Yeah, so, yeah. it looks nice. Um, you turn uh, into fire and you oh, dash across yeah, dash the world through. and you come back and you're a man again and then yeah, you like dash the guy. through chain link fences and, and stuff and like, like that. And uh, like, like exhaust vents. Like there are conspicuous okay. exhaust vents in a bunch of buildings and you can like go into those and come out the top of the pipe oh, weird. And, and re-coalesce or whatever. But so he's not a fire character oh. like the way Cole was an electricity guy. Okay. His power is to siphon abilities from other heroes. Or char- you know, like super- Kirby. Yeah, basically. Yes, he is Kirby. Um... Because the whole language, I understand. Great. Well, I guess the whole, the whole, uh, the whole point of that ending that they went with was that this event unleashed this force around the world, and like a ton of people turned into these superhero type characters. So they're everywhere now. Sure, so I mean, there's they this, some of that stuff in that trailer. Yeah, so there's this whole paramilitary government organization like that exists to corral and suppress these people. So his power is to go around and he steal powers from other people. So the the fire and smoke stuff that they've shown is just one set of abilities he took from one character. So, so you'd actually take them from specific characters, yeah, like say that, bosses. That's sure. Yes. So it's Mega Man. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if it'd be bosses, but yeah. the, the the point is, like he he could potentially could get any kind of powers from anybody at some point in the game, which sounds neat. Uh, can we talk about Beyond? I don't know what yeah. there is to talk the f- about yet. What the fuck? Dude, I mean, there's a ton. To, what mean, the fuck happened to that game? Well, I don't th- see. So this is the thing I've gotten is that I don't think anything really happened to it. I think this is just the other part of the game right, that they haven't that they shown didn't. it all yet. So my my theory is the stuff they showed last year, where she's like the police are after her at the gas station and stuff, is like the first thirty minutes of the game, and that's where they pull her into the special ops program. 
So I, I, no, I, I, took, the opposite. I, I took it the opposite, sure the opposite of like opposite. this is going to be flashback, or, well, or but at least chronologically, that's all that was because it, all, everything they showed was some kind of special forces mission. I think that's, that's special that forces mission. In the Middle yeah. East. I was watching someone play it this morning. Yeah. And, uh, oh, you okay? Well, you've seen that more special than I have, forces then. mission is still played like heavy rain. Hmm. It's still like push up. Oh, I know that. The next yeah, cover, like you're, you're, you know. Moving, I mean, I'm not moving things to like. Yeah, like you are using ghosts to kill child soldiers. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not worried. That oh God, it's a it's really? a third person shooter. Or nah, something? Yeah. Are you using ghosts to kill child soldiers, Jeff? I think. Or this, yo, that's right. The child soldiers with you. You're a friend to child soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being told uh, to kill regular soldiers, regular non-child soldiers. That's a little bit. That's much with better. the help that's of child soldiers. Okay. But whatever. If you're killing people with ghosts, who fucking cares? How old they are? <laughs> At some point, like whatever. I ripped this person in in half. You know that no one asks you how old was the person. What was weird was Maybe they should just how completely like what they showed at the Sony press conference. How completely disconnected that yeah. felt. From yeah, anything. and they showed that at Judges Week, and, and the the build there was uh, was not in the state that it is here at the show. It, okay. uh, it was kind of messed up, so I didn't really get a, a, too much of a chance to look at it. But you look at it, and it's just like, why is she in like Somalia or something? Yeah. Like, why is she getting shot in the leg and carried away in a helicopter? This is ridiculous. Um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if that game ends up, you know, as part of her training or whatever. Like, you end up going around the world, probably, mm. and see a bunch of different weird sure. scenarios. And, you know, you've got a ghost inside you or something. Like, anything can happen. Art. Also, art. Whatever, I'm looking forward to that game. I, I liked Heavy Rain. Like, I, uh, I applaud the ambition, even if they're deeply flawed in the process, and I deeply disagree they'll, with, they'll some, with some of that ambition. Like, the big swipes, like, I... I I think they're important. And, you know, it, they'll get better voice acting. Yeah. Probably. At least, I mean, at least, from, their, at least so. from their leads. Yeah. I mean, they got Will and Defoe. They got, like, they got, Defoe they got Will and Defoe. Will like, and Defoe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. That, that at least looks interesting. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. Like, the, once they got to the third party stuff, like, it just it, the whole thing just, it was like they just said, now, fuck you, here are some video games. Yeah, it's a like, lot of them. There was that whole mess of indie stuff that came out. Yeah, you know, the transistor, transistor and, up on and stage, Octodad and all that other Octodad stuff. Octodad up on stage. Then like Square Enix, you know, that seventeen bit game I think looks super awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I am I'm immediately more interested in Galaxy. It looks like Starflight kind yeah. of, yeah. but like anime Starflight, like that. That was like, it, like it took a long time and a lot of shows of Skulls of the Shogun for me to kind of grasp that game. Be like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Whereas, like, I feel like Galaxy, what just the brief glimpse, I'm like, this seems awesome. Like, I'm not 100 percent sure what this game is, but I have an idea in my head, and if it's that, or even if it's not that, it's probably it at least looks pretty awesome. Yeah. It does. It does. I like, don't know. There's spaceships, and it's it sounds like it's a thing that you know they put together pretty quickly, hmm. uh, uh, all told. So maybe that's a. You know. my, my understanding is that was the case for a lot of those guys. Yeah. Honestly. Well, talking to I, I, I spoke with Phil. Uh, uh, briefly uh, before we started the show here talking about Octodad and he was saying you know that's a team that has zero console development experience and they were able to get you know their PC version of Octodad basically running on PS4 hardware uh, in a pretty trivial manner hmm. like it, it wasn't for them a very difficult thing he said yeah, you know we had to change some shaders you know there were a few right, things like yeah. that that had to be tweaked but otherwise it was a a very painless process for them, which I think is going to be, you know, for a lot of indie devs who are cutting their teeth on PC versions of their games, that that will make the PS4 that much more. And you know, that's that's to me, that's kind of that segment, the you know, the the Adam Boys uh, fronted stuff and in, in that that little indie games thing, uh, including out of fucking nowhere, Lauren Lanning, which. <laughs> Was How amazing. awesome was that? Oh, by the way, Lauren Landing, Landing, Landing still is alive. here. What I, okay, I want to say this. Still alive. <laughs> I want to say this about you can't kill about Lauren Landing. Adam, uh, about Adam Boys. Lauren Landing. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to say this about Adam Boys again. You know, we're, we're we know Adam from way back. Uh, Man, wait. But for you, we knew him from like several <laughs> fr- several yeah. jobs ago. Yeah, I it's guess true. At that point, yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, so, seems like he might keep this one. Yeah, he, he seems like they're doing okay. Yeah. At, well, they seem to like him over there. Yeah. According to Jack, if he's got enough stuff, so right. Yeah, we'll yeah. as long as he year. as long as he keeps finding more games. <laughs> but you know, I, but 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 uh, I, what I want to say is is that he never ceases to be excited about seeing 
like game people. Yeah. Like when he was like fucking Lauren Lanning. Yeah. Like I knew. Yeah. I, like yeah. that, he, like it's he was like, shocked. Like almost that he like, was there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like he'd been rehearsing like, this for a while. <laughs> like, this is really. Like he like, wants I'm like some. I'm introducing Lauren Lanning. He wants Lanning. recognition from the people around him that you see this. Lauren Lanning's back here, folks. <laughs> Come on! Also, the game looked pretty cool. Yeah, like, the, the remake yeah. looks pretty yeah. great, and I I, I, like I, I, I really liked those Oddworld games pre-Munch. They were neat. So, Munch was okay. Eh. What really? <laughs> Munch was okay. For, at the time, <laughs> was not, it? All right, it's uh, not the time or the place. I mean, I, all right. <laughs> wow, that's the game that everyone's going to double down here. on. Not everyone. I have no opinion about Munch. Uh, yeah, so I, 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 I very know. little. I'm not going to get in on this. I remember it being okay, but I don't, I don't know. It's been, it's been a long fucking time. But I uh, yeah, I, I that was the the two the two things that I took from that word uh, that it it contrasted with the way that Microsoft, even if it doesn't necessarily represent like some fundamental philosophical difference, the at least well, at the press conference, the way that you know Sony presented the indie game stuff versus the way that that Microsoft presented it. You know, it it present it shows this thing. It it it, it presents this this I mean, just, no, I philosophical mean, there is a difference. Phil- there is a philosophical difference. So like the, the self publishing, like self publishing is a big difference between yep. Sony and Microsoft. Where Microsoft, unless they change their policies, and they have said publicly, like, hey, we're still working that stuff yeah, out. Yeah, But they have a slot system. They have uh, a very traditional way of publishing your games and they're getting rid of indie games right like the indie games channel no longer exists on xbox one which makes sense because they're getting rid of xna but they're removing things that uh create barriers and sony is saying like all right so uh, whatever it's real simple to get on our platform if you're making a pc game we're going to make it uh trivial to be on ps4 and vita and then even like a further extension like the remote play means that like maybe you only have to make a ps3 version then that also just extends to the vita if folks are buying the ps3 version they're just doing a smart job of removing the barriers uh to get developers to be like all right sure yeah you know what we're on board there is still a nostalgia there is still a desire to be on a console platform and that's still going to be around for a little while yet but that that's kind of just the inherent difference between the microsoft philosophy in general and you know like that the tone of their conference and and the sony conference where it's like sony seemed like they they were listening they were going out of their way to sort of like acknowledge hey here were these problems here's what we're fixing microsoft seemed like they were just kind of on a rail like we have this plan we're just going to keep going we're not listening we're not really paying attention to what other people are saying we think we're great we think we're doing everything right and that's that you know, it's like even Don Matrick is coming out and saying things like, you know, well, if you don't want to, you know, if you don't have an online connection, we have the Xbox 360 for that. Like, that's their response to people that's in, bad, in the face of that. That is a really terrible quote. Yeah, that is yeah, awful. It's a, a brutal quote. It, it is, but I think it gets back to just, the, you know, the, the philosophy behind the Xbox One and the, the yep. stuff that they're doubling down on with requiring internet connections and what that means for people in other parts of the world where that's not really an option. I mean, they're really just, they're, they're building the system for people that like to buy a lot of digital content mm-hmm. and people that you know are interested in buying DLC and want to buy movies and want to rent stuff. Like, they're building the system that is specifically for those people. And if you don't fit into that bucket, the message that Microsoft is sending is that we'll be fine without you. Yeah. Go do something else with it, you know? And, and uh, you know, it, it, that's where it becomes that math problem for Microsoft of, you know, do... Does does roping in all of these people, the you know people that are you know whatever like well to do financially okay or you know whatever that are going to be those large consumers of digital games and large consumers of, of digital media? Yeah. Does that outweigh cutting off all of these people? And I don't think they would have done this if they didn't run numbers in some way that said yes, this is the right way to go. So the people over here are right to be mad because you know Microsoft at some point is saying like you no longer matter to us. Um, and, and and that's pretty fucked up. Yeah. But at the same time, like they're a business. They're doing the thing that they think is right for their business and right for the the countries where they do the best business. And you know, it just seems like that they're okay not being a, a worldwide player anymore. I mean, you know, obviously they they practically gave up on Japan. Is that thing even coming out? Six Japan? seven years ago. Sure. Why why wouldn't it? Eh. You know. Yeah. Um, I, I, I they, they, like, actually, I think, I, I'm pretty sure it is because you know I when they were talking about TV stuff, 
uh, for the the HDMI in stuff and some of their other things. There was yeah. a you know the talk of like, well, you know, as soon as we crossed this line and, and realized we wanted to do this, we then had to back into it with like every single cable provider and every other thing to like yeah. and go around the world. You know, specifically saying like we had to go to all these other countries and start sure. trying to do these deals. So they are trying to make that stuff work where it can. Uh, I don't know, you know, if they'll be able to get the deals done or whatever, but you know, yeah, they're they're perfectly happy saying, you know, more or less. I mean, yeah, statements like, you know, hey, get a 360, poor people. You know, it's practically yeah. what he's saying. Uh, Romney-esque, you know? as certain people in this room have said. I mean, I think, I think oh, he's not here anymore. He's going to be really mad. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We'll tell him later. Like the, the extension of that, I think that like understandably so, what gets people upset is that you know when then Microsoft is going on saying like we're going to spend a billion dollars on exclusives. It's like all right, so you've created a platform that you're saying all right, we're going to exclude this part of the worldwide audience, or because we are going to double down on the on these folks that we're going to get more money out of. But then we're also going to spend a bunch of money excluding these games from coming out on these other platforms because we're going to spend a lot of money to try and get people to feel like we have to buy an Xbox One because, man, I really want to play Titanfall, right? right? Like, I don't want to wait for Titanfall 2 when Respawn is ready yeah, to, yeah. To, do, to go completely multi-platform. And, like, that's, like, th I completely sympathize with that frustration as someone that, like, like I'm going to buy everything, but I know that that's not the situation that right. everyone else that's is in. That's not the norm. So to be sitting on the outside and be like, I can only get one, the PS4 seems like a way more attractive option for like, we'll see how the used game stuff shakes out with third parties. But yeah, like, yeah. But like on, on its face. It though it sounds like that they were out there saying that they weren't going to allow online passes. That's what they told me when, when I talked okay, to them yeah, earlier yeah. today. It was like that, but it, they left themselves some back doors. They were saying that online passes are no longer going to be part of PS4 as a result of uh, multiplayer becoming part of PlayStation Plus. They didn't see the reason that people would want to have oh, sure, right. um, yeah. online passes. Uh, so, but they also, hmm. the message I got from Scott Rode when I, when I talked to him was, look at the response we got at our press conference. Why would anyone want to do something any different? So there seemed to be a confidence that why would publishers want to uh, incur the wrath of consumers as a result of that seemed to be the subtext of sure. a lot of our conversation about that yeah. was not guarantees outside of first party but can you imagine what someone like EA or Ubisoft like is going to get right. if they yeah. decide well, to to throw down so, Sony's being smart because they I mean they're they're playing directly to the E3 audience the people that are going to watch those live streams the yeah. people that are that yeah. gonna care enough about games to want to watch tags. anything about E3 and, and yeah, this yeah. is and this is the hearts and minds game this yeah. is not the selling. Yeah, you're you're all the one units. like play to the base, like get your early adopters lined up. Like, I mean, it was the the, you know for for all that that Sony did, it was you know they did a few very simple things at that press conference that engendered a huge amount of goodwill. And at this point, that's what E3 is about. For these yeah. systems at this level, that's all you want is you want you know enthusiast press. You want the you know folks at home. They're going to watch these live streams. And being people, like, you know, yes, I'm on board. Yeah. And that happened in a way yesterday watching that that I have literally never seen in my 13 years of coming to E3. Uh -huh. Like, even the old Nintendo stuff, watching those people go nuts. Some like, of this stuff was a lot like that. Sitting in the middle of it. It was. This, this uh, felt like, like at least, like from yeah. watching the stream, at least those levels, if and, not and, more. And, and, some, and some of those, games will, some of those games will be on the Xbox. You know, like Kingdom Hearts yeah. 3 is not yeah. some exclusive thing. Like it's, you know, it, it's going to come everywhere. But the fact that they were able to announce it there attaches it to them. But also, when they, that, they said to Kingdom Hearts 3, when they started showing that trailer, yeah. people fucking lost their fucking mind. Yes, yeah. nerds. These games are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but people are deeply attached to them. They really are. That's, you know, it's, there's no accounting for taste. I don't yeah. look. <laughs> like, people were, yeah, it was, yeah, it's, it's the, like, the way like, of it is like people had found the fucking Holy Ghost and they yeah. were like, there's some <laughs> shit going on. Jumping Pentecostal. out of their seats. It was fucking this intense. woman, like, she was freaking out. You know, it's like everyone was going fucking ape yeah. shit around yeah. there. It I don't, was I don't, crazy. I don't know if anything will ever top the Twilight Princess reveal, but this was up there. You know sure what the that difference is? It's like the Twilight Princess reveal and, and some of the Nintendo reveals, I always felt bad. When the, when the reaction happened, there was this element of just like, 
Oh jeez. I mean, on. why would you? I mean, you know? I mean, grown men were crying at that thing. That's just, like, uh, that's just like pathetic. Uh, what also, like, the difference here is like you know, Sony encouraged fans. Like they they have fans in attendance. Right. Yeah. Like or you know, Nintendo and, and briefings are different because like well, Nintendo has. Oh, well, Nintendo definitely had fans. At but, those uh, things, but you know, they Even they acknowledged it. So oh, yes. Sony oh, yeah. acknowledged oh, yeah. that they had allowed fans to come, and I think that's the difference. And that's yeah. It, we they need to stop calling these, and I think you know some of them have. You know, EA calls it the download or whatever the fuck it is. Uh, but you Pre- know, press conferences. Is yeah, a, it's not a press conference. There's no Q&A, most press conferences no, are not aired it's on a, live television. It's a stage show, and yeah, like they're is. putting on a stage show. Yeah. Um, and and it's this weird other thing. But you know, to like people like saying like, why are there so much cheering at a press conference? Like, because this isn't a press conference. Like, we're outnumbered yeah. by game developer. Like, the, I think the media is outnumbered by game developers at, the, at some of these things. Sure. And, yeah, and then on top of that, you know, if they're letting fans in and yeah. analysts and all this other stuff, like you know, it is not, it is not all the media there. You yeah. know, like fucking press hat taking notes. Right. You know, it, it's uh, the, the people cheering are super fans or employees of the company or both, basically. Yeah. So that's not to say that there are no people that are you know walking around with media badges. Oh sure, or like sure, but yeah. it's like power gloves, right? Yeah. Oh, I think that was Triforce Johnson, wasn't it? I don't know Ooh. what you're even. talking Oh, dude, about. that guy's awesome. That's a okay. Dude. Oh man, he's a crazy person. He's an awesome, crazy person. All right. Well, yeah. I met him. I met him at the Wii launch like six years ago. Cool. He's nuts. That's I, I, in a I great did way. Not, did he, not he, he, there really, was he really shoved his way through the was, crowd this yeah. morning. Yeah. If, if that weird thing of all I saw, I gotta be up front so I can see Reggie say. Sure. Play the game. To be fair, like all I Triple saw was H the glove. It might have been somebody else, but I, who else would do that? Um, <laughs> the way that the way that stuff timed up behind him badly, it didn't work at all. Reggie, I was scared while I was there. And, like I, was, like I got a little dizzy at one point when he was up there talking this morning at the Nintendo thing because it was like he was just shouting. <laughs> and there was like he was on this really small stage, so it was like kind of sad. And he was talking to Mario, and it was like, and this room was like, you know, the, their booth was just over full of people. And I was looking around, going, like, I don't see any way out of here. <laughs> and then so I stood there, and then you escaped. I did. You like, left me. I did. <laughs> I stayed, and you know Miyamoto uh, was talking, and I of course wanted you know hear what Miyamoto has to say. I don't want to be the guy running out of the room when Miyamoto is speaking because that's a real, be a real fucked up thing to do. Um, but then as soon as they transitioned out, of there, I'm like, I took off. And I came back at one point when they you were did. when they were uh, letting people play games, Ju- and then left just before they said, "By the way, the Wii U Fit Lady is a character in, in Smash Which Brothers." Which is great. What? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's what? awesome. Like it's hilarious. What? Popular Nintendo character Wii Fit Lady. Oh, wow. No sarcasm. That is a great addition. Like alongside Animal Cross Villager. Hilarious. Oh, that's. Like, it's right up there and with Mega the Man. It's right up there with the Nintendo Dog's background. They, yeah, they should yeah, have a Nintendo yeah. Dog's character, though. Yeah, yeah. Beat the shit out of that dog. <laughs> okay. Between okay. that and the child you know soldiers, I'm, I'm starting to think you're a sociopath, Jeff. Sure. No. Just starting, huh? Uh, what else about Nintendo? Dog fights. <laughs> what? So that was that Reggie just came out and just said dog <laughs> fights. Play the game. <laughs> <laughs> He's brought out two dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He just, like, the stage was small. He, just, he swam yes, off the water yeah, bottle and he yeah. spit it in the air all over himself. Uh. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> These dogs are. Where am I? <laughs> um, and again, we talked. I talked about this with our guests earlier tonight, uh, but I, you know, got you know what was shown from Nintendo was again. I feel telegraphed by the the announcement they made, you know, a month and a half, a couple months ago, of these are the games that we've got coming up with. We're making new versions of these games that you guys already like. And I guess, I, uh, man, I was so I'm of uh, two minds. So Retro is a studio I love. Loved all the Metroid Prime games. Yeah, Donkey Kong Country Returns, fantastic platformer. Like they somehow made the idea of like transitioning from. Create like reinventing Metroid to uh, creating an excellent platformer like it was nothing. Yeah. Um, and I was super disappointed when they announced that they were doing another Donkey Kong Country game. Yeah. But when you play it, it's fucking great. Like it's excellent. But that, I'm still also pretty. That's disappointed. the roller. That's the roller coaster ride with every Nintendo announcement at this point. That was like, well, but, I expected that. But, here, but here, it's kind of good. But here's like, my problem: is that I just I every time that they do it, I have. 
diminishing amount of interest in riding that exact same ride again. Yeah, like sure. each like I went through the Nintendo booth, I saw Mario Kart. I'm like, this looks really sharp. I think that this is, I mean, far and away the best looking Mario Kart. The hovercraft stuff is, seems pretty. Yeah. I didn't see any anything that was mechanically different because I, I wasn't standing there for very long. Uh, I didn't actually play the game, but I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, that's Mario Kart. And then I looked at Super Mario 3D World, and I was like, yeah, that looks like they took Super Mario 3D Land, and you know, the multiplayer's probably going to be meaningful to that experience. But being, being a cat's pretty cool. Cat suit, uh, dude. you know, and cat I saw suit. I saw cat suits, like, and especially if you ruin like a. Kotaku video where they're trying to talk about <laughs> it. And I'm just, just shouting, cat, 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 cat. J- Jason from Kotaku just kept trying to run ahead, so I would just yell about being a cat while he was trying to run ahead. <laughs> Their comment section was pretty funny. Uh, I, I, I feel like... Kotaku.com. Yeah. I feel like what you know what we say about Nintendo things are sure. what you could say about Call of Duty. You sure, know, sure, in, in sure. a lot of ways too. It's like you know, it's going to come out. It's going to be this thing that is of uh, a certain level of quality. You know, they, they take their time with their stuff, and and you know, it's generally speaking. But really we're good. talking about an entire but publishers and platform holders. Y- yeah, output. I mean, the, so yeah, like totally, it's, a, yeah. it's a different ball game. And they've when been doing this way longer. Yeah. Like that's just been the thing forever with that. I guess, right. but their, their quality is super goddamn high. Sure. Generally, yes. Like, and I think people that you know, uh, people that are not us that have been not have not been playing games for as long as we have are sure. are are a little are not as far down those roads as we are. You know, this is like their third Mario Kart game or their fifth or something, and they go, "Yeah, cool." I mean, Mario Kart Whereas Wii sold like an ungodly number of copies. Yeah, so, like yeah. for those, and that, that was a bad game. <laughs> yeah, that was not a. Bad, no, it wasn't. It was all right, but the it was fine. It was a Mario Kart game. Yeah, so it was fine. It was fine, but that's yeah. That's my fundamental issue with the what I saw from the Nintendo stuff was I, it's nothing. Yeah, they nothing, they, nothing, they seem like they seem like they're continuing to kind of do their own thing, and and in some ways that's that's great. You know, I, in some ways I'd probably rather have that than have them be like super reactionary in a really weird, desperate way. Sure, yeah. that'd probably be bad. At least they're doing their own thing. Yeah, like, but you know, but at, at the same worse. time, like I you know I feel like I'm I'm. Every year, I come a little closer to have, having come to terms with that the thing they're doing is not the thing I want anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. There are a lot of video games out there now, and, and you know, there, there are plenty for me to play. But um, I miss Nintendo in, in a lot of ways. I think I, I, would, I would like for them to... It'd, it'd be great if they were still making games that I felt like I could connect with. But I, all this stuff, I just look at it and just go, like, I, I don't want any part of any of this stuff. But the handheld stuff, I think they're kind of crushing it. Yeah. They're yeah. continuing to. Um, you know, don't have Animal Crossing is pretty awesome, even though it's the same thing, because they haven't made as many of them. Um, and I skipped the last two, right. effectively. Yeah, yeah. So I'm ready for another one of those experiences. Sure, yeah. So, but, I, I, you know, it, yeah, it, it's... Uh, on some level, you almost wish they was like, you know, just cut the console game. And, and not in the super cynical way of, like, you know, put out your games on a Sony platform. Like, no, just, like, dump 100% of your resources into 3DS development. Unfortunately, it's just too early for them to do that. Yeah, right? yeah, Like, yeah. that is probably the long-term strategy if I... Like, if they were if man. they were just 100% handheld focused, I bet that would be even better. You know, like they're, hand, they're really good at that like stuff an, when they're focused. And like an Apple TV thing that maybe shot it if you want to watch it on sure. the screen. Like, yeah. But, like, just one Nintendo machine that got, like... Because just watching their split R&D resources, like, they're only... That's what makes watching their Nintendo Directs, their press conferences, like... like disappointing because they're splitting it across two platforms and if you compare that to like the output of like what Sony did like Vita versus PS3 and PS4 like I mean they're supporting three in some ways but like mm. these companies only have so much they can put into and Nintendo is huge they have a ton of developers working on a ton of different things but it's so clear where their big focus is and it's making sure like three like if at the end of this in the next two years 3DS is the big runaway success and Wii U just sort of like it's kind of just, out. Yeah, it's it's just fine. doing fine on its own, but not really. It, it's better that they had one that skyrocketed off that they can then say. Are we back? And we're back. So yes, controllers. Yeah. Actually, holding. So, I, so what was what was your? So feeling? I, I haven't pl- touched a PlayStation Four controller yet. What's your feeling on that? I am proud to say that my first experience with the PlayStation Four. Uh huh. The pinball arcade. Yeah. Was that just the shortest line at the Sony booth? It wasn't even a line. I I I, the first uh, thing. I worked my exhibitor badge privilege and went in there about five minutes before the show opened. Okay, nice. And that was the first kiosk I saw, and they had the Star Trek: The Next Generation table up, and it felt like Manifest Destiny at the top <laughs> right on that. 
Uh, that controller is fantastic. I, I was, like it. I was shocked. Like it feels yeah. like I like the DualShock Three, but I didn't love it. But yeah. the I like the triggers on the PS4 controller. The triggers are they're fine. Yeah. They're better. They they fixed the trigger problem. Yeah. Like PS3 triggers were terrible. So it both of those squishy. Yeah. Both, yeah. both mm -hmm. of those controllers have basically fixed the one problem they had. I think it's kind of a wash now because they're both they both seem great. But but that thing, the feel of it, the handles conform better to the to the, to the fingers. Yeah. There's a kind of an almost a rubberized like textured grip on the back that makes sure. it feel like it like you hold it really solidly. It's got a good weight to it. You know, it, it feels hefty without being too heavy. Uh, it just it seemed really. So they were running fun. them loose. It wasn't like strapped into a. Uh, it was it was like bolted in some way to a thing, okay. to a cable. Um, but I mean, it wasn't like tethered physically to. No, like no, no. I can, I can pick it up. I can pick it up and move it around. And move around. Yeah, I can okay. feel it in the hand and yeah. everything. Yeah, it just nice feels. Weight. It feels good. It, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know what the touchpad is going to be for. But all the basic stuff. I didn't like the option. And the I don't know that anything has used it yet. Yeah, uh, I'm still saying. working that, Alex. So I played uh, Mercenary Kings, which is the from the Wizard guys. <laughs> right. Like they're, yeah. they're porting their their new game, which is basically like a four player open world metal slug. Mm. Like if I had to like oh yeah yeah yeah, a, yeah sure a descriptor to it. Sure. It's awesome. Like yeah. it's, it's a really sweet looking game. Um, like one of the things they're playing them on with is like when you press start, like it brings up their menu, this or, or your map, and it's this huge map. Uh, rather than like having an analog stick, like it's like oh well, just like kind of rub against the touchpad. Okay. Yeah, like yeah. it seems like it's really early in terms of figuring out what that's useful for. Right. Um, it's also weird, like that it clicks. Yeah. Like that's I I went to go touch it and it clicked by accident, and so maybe the click will end up proving more useful than actually the the touchpad portion, but. That may be one of those things that it's there. A couple of games use it in a sort of interesting fashion, but yeah. it's just sort of we need something new on the controller. Right? I don't know. Yeah, What's yeah. cheap? Touchpads are cheap. Yeah, sure. the, the only thing I really didn't like about it at all, and it wasn't that big a deal, was the the, the option, and I forget what the other name is for the start and select button. Share. On PS4. I wish they were still just called start and select. I know what those mean, even though they don't mean anything. Yeah. Uh, but they're they're really high. They're like almost at the top edge of the controller. Right. And it yeah. feels unnatural, but I mean, whatever. Who Hopefully, with the touchpad, you won't need to use yeah. those buttons. Or, or, or you'll, you'll, you'll get used, used to them. But you'll get used to them. You know, I mean, share is going to have a very specific function. Yeah. So How do you feel about the uh, uh, the uh, Xbox One triggers? Uh, they actually felt a little unnatural to me. I thought they felt a little like a little, a little smushy. Uh, the, the 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 give on them seemed okay to me. It felt fairly smooth. The, yeah. the I, I didn't get the sense of the same sense of tension that I get off mm. of like a fresh 360 trigger. Yeah, I could maybe see that. There's yeah, there's a little less pushback. Like you can push them in a little easier. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, well, I, softer. Like this, this, yeah. the only way I can think to describe it. They, yeah. they have a weird shape to them where the the inner edge is a little raised. Yeah, it's raised a little more than the outer yeah. edge, which feels a little strange. You know, the, I the thought it ended up being kind of contoured to your hands a little better. Like, I, I, yeah, it you, feels pretty, I kinda, pretty I kinda, good. I kind of had to like straighten my finger a little bit yeah. to make that feel. And it seems right. like it's a little easier to switch from the bumpers to the triggers yeah. on that stuff uh, as well. Uh, yeah, I think that's a, a pretty good controller. I wish that I wish they were showing Killer Instinct on regular controllers. Right. They're just showing it on the fight sticks because I, I want to use the D-pad in a fighting game. Right. Yeah. And see how that feels. See what's up. Um, just just touching the D-pad, though. I mean, so Nintendo's patent apparently has expired on the the plus shape because right. they've got it now, and it feels great. You know, it's it is it's a plus D-pad. Like it's it works like it should. It's a little clicky. It's a little clicky. It doesn't have a lot of throw to it, but yeah. um, uh, the sticks on both controllers seem perfectly fine. Yeah. Like it's 2013. You know, controllers should not be a sticking point by now. You know. The D-pad's better on that one. The triggers are better on the PS4. Like, it just controllers are good. Yeah, good improvements. Excellent. So, uh, Well, Brad, what else? Uh, on, on your on your docket for today? Played Wind Waker HD. Yeah. That looks... I mean, it looks fantastic. But, yeah. you know, you know what that game is. I hear the sailing is faster. Huh. Uh, there's okay. turbo turbo sailing. Is there more tingle stuff in it? Well, they... Yeah, they, the they had... Maybe there's more, but, I mean, the thing on the Direct was that they have adapted the GBA... Oh right, uh, right, right, tingle right, right. functionality the into the game something. somehow. Okay. Yeah. I will say the way that they're one of the Miiverse interactions of like taking pictures or writing notes, putting it into a, a message in a bottle and throwing that into the water, and that's how it sends out to the Miiverse. That's cool. Mm. That's cool. that's yeah. fucking yeah. dumb and awesome. That's like, pretty cute. In a really yeah, like that's this stuff about Nintendo that's just sort of like ah, 
Yeah, it, like, it's so smart. Some and, of the Meverse interactions could could be really cool. I mean, it's, it, it seems like that's where they're doing some neat experimentation. Like Game and Wario has, you know, the, the game's not out yet, so the server wasn't up when I tried it. But it looks like it has r- roughly some sort of crowdsourced equivalent to d- draw something in it hmm. with Meverse stuff. Huh. Um, and yeah, like the, it just seems like the, that's there's a lot of really crazy shit they could they could yeah. do with there, and, or, or the, there's a lot of crazy shit they are doing. So right, right. That, that's that's cool. Uh, and then the last thing I did was uh, went with Patrick to what they called Xbox One Hundred One. How Took was you to that? School, son. Yeah. It was just tech demos. It was like it was just possible with like the cloud computing. It was some of the engineers from Microsoft, and like I I, I love listening to engineers talk about stuff because they largely drop the shitty corporate buzzword terminology and just talk in real you know did they say anything particularly revelatory or different from what they've been saying they showed else? they showed a demo that they that one of the guys wrote that is pulling from real time nasa data of the asteroid belt and there are like millions of asteroids so they were saying like all right here's what we can process locally on the box and it was like 30 or 40,000 asteroids and it was you know they showed it you know they showed them all floating around and then it was like all right if we go to this and they didn't go to the cloud, you know. He's like, if we go to this elastic, elastic like cloud compute, you know, like they're just saying here, we have boxes and data centers, and they will crunch more numbers and feed that data down to you. You know, it's, it's like, just like just hit up EC2. Yeah, they str- like they he stopped just short of saying that. I mean, you know, Microsoft owns its own data centers; right. they're not right. using Amazon or whatever. But the point is, like, it's no it's no big pie in the sky with the cloud. You know, it's just like. We have air conditioned. We have air conditioned buildings full of really powerful computers. So basically, they like they increased the number of asteroids that they were tracking by like a factor of eight. It went up from thirty, forty thousand to like three hundred and something thousand. And it was just like you know we are we're taking all this NASA data, pumping it through this thing, and pulling it down. You know, so the console doesn't have to crunch it. And since the console is not crunching all those numbers, it's free to focus on other like local tasks that will make the whole thing. You know. Who knows how developers will actually take advantage of that stuff? And I tried to ask, like, how much will they be able to grab? You know, because it's this, it's this amorphous resource, right? Like cloud computing power. You know, how much can you devote to one Xbox? Right. And they didn't have a good answer for that. Uh, but at least it was nice to hear them say, like, you know, this is what this actually is. You know, right. this is not just a buzzword. I think that's going to be the thing that's you know they started talking about some of the Gaikai stuff. Yeah. Uh, a little bit at the Sony press conference and. You know, I, that's the same type deal as you know the the, the data centers they're going to have to build and maintain for that. Sony says they've already done the work mm-hmm. as well, but you know it's kind of like you know, believe it when you see it with, with some of that stuff because sure. if these systems just start flying off the shelves and you know even you know it will probably pretty low computing power in the right. grand scheme of things, but you know if Titanfall needs to hit a dedicated server, you know per player to populate the game with with AI soldiers and yeah. stuff like that then how does that even work I imagine yeah. there's all sorts of guidelines for how much how many cloud cycles your game is allowed to take yeah maybe maybe uh, I mean you have to set something like that or else yeah and then you know, it, I feel like they're used to the cloud the cloud uh, for some of that stuff is is you know, disingenuous in spots when they when they talk about stuff like Forza's Drivatar. <laughs> you know what they're really we're going to get through this without saying Drivatar. I was Drivatar. really hoping we were going to get through this without saying Drivatar. No, well, here we are. Drivatar. Yep, he's still saying it. I know. The AI based on the way you're playing the game. That's Tekken has done that in Ghost Battle mode for years. Yeah. Didn't you know? the original Forza have some version of that? Like like original Forza? Like it wasn't what they're talking about now exactly. I, don't, I think there was something like I that. I don't know, but that's... You know, I, I'm sure they're doing a lot of calculations to kind of determine the driving styles, and, and I think that's a, a potentially impressive concept for a driving game if they can yeah. if they can pull it off. Um, but, you know, like, literally, they're talking about downloading ghost data for AI, like right. Tekken does. And, and at some point, you know, what is... They just need to stop saying the cloud when they really mean, you know... Well, like other games, we've got a storage server where we can fill it full of AI profiles and then you can just download them to your box and run them. Unless they really are running that AI somewhere else and every game is technically an online game. 
Well, well that, that, that was, to me seems yeah. incredibly wasteful. Yeah, I don't uh, know. That was the implication with this NASA demo was that there is a lot of actual computation happening off site right. that's just like the result of which is being fed into your console. Oh, it seems like that's possible. I think Jeff's point is just like they're they're overusing yeah, yeah. the term the cloud. They're, using, cloud it, they're using it as their <laughs> as their catch all for sure. anything that's happening remotely. Yeah. Well, that happened in the cloud. Well, that's right. Yeah, I mean, you know, like it's. it's Xbox 360 games have had, you know, title, no, was it title managed storage? Mm, yeah. uh, you know, like places for them to store data for other players to hit. Yeah, for things, I mean, that, for things that are, you know, more grandiose than leaderboards. That's, yeah, that's stuff. Shared I, levels I think that stuff, stuff like that. tends to be something you pull down, like, at runtime once before you start, whereas, like, this, this asteroid thing had, like, a straight up Yeah, net, no, like a the network, asteroid thing you're talking about like sounds it had like, like a, a very legitimate yeah, yeah. Uh, you well, know, you know, know, that could tech be, yeah. demo for so, that sort of thing. I, like, I just think, to me, the Forza thing sounds like yeah, I, yeah, yeah, know, yeah, I am not sure. a software engineer sure. yet. Um, Turn code. Project Spark's going to make us all software engineers. <laughs> my God rock. help us. My pet rock. Um, you know, th that to me, like the, the Forza stuff, I feel like they're not yeah. they're not being clear in a way that uh, that they should be with, with some of that stuff. Because, uh, you know, when they, when they say the cloud, but if it's, you know, like, yeah. like I said, AI profiles for, yeah. uh, you know, that are based on real people it, is, it, not, it, a, is I, not a new yeah. concept. It, it remains to be seen if anybody will do anything interesting with this stuff. Yeah. I, so I'm seeing fours on Thursday. Do you want me to ask about this? Do you want me to get yeah, clarification? Yeah, I would just say, like, you know, just it, at, at runtime, do they just go grab eight of your friend's local yeah. things? Or if they've, if they've grabbed them recently, they just continue to store them locally? Sure. You know, are they running that somewhere else? Like, well, yeah, what, what, what does it mean? What is, the, what is the cloud? Just yeah. say, what's the cloud? <laughs> and then see what see how many Don, Don like Matrick okay. runs in from, from yeah. out of the room. Of, yeah. of running up from behind you, just bulldogs Reggie you into the ground. Reggie comes in, hits you with the chair, and says, play the game! <laughs> you, you'll appreciate this. The last thing they showed at that Xbox 101 was uh, a more in-depth look at the NFL integration, uh -huh. which uh, actually is pretty cool. Like, mm. the... Like the, the way the fantasy stuff works is like when your team, uh, when any player scores any sort of points, it saves that clip and then puts that in the corner and says, do you want to watch that clip of how that player scored those points in that game? Like even if you're not watching that game, it mm -hmm. just pulls it at, from your fantasy team. But so at the end, uh, you know, they're showing all the stuff from NFL.com. So the, the guy who worked at Microsoft that helps build all the stuff, I was like, so like, I don't use NFL.com for like any of my stuff. Like I use ESPN and Yahoo, like like most people. Like so, you guys gonna pull that data? He's like, no. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, oh. he said that eventually they will have further partnerships down the road. But like for folks that are interested in that stuff, that is a complete killer because nobody uses, at least in my experience, I none of the the fantasy stuff I've used is NFL.com based. It is all Yahoo and ESPN. To be fair, if you are specifically buying an Xbox One with the fantasy sports stuff in mind, you're a dumb dumb. Right, but like if I if really, I could pull in my Yahoo stuff, yeah, like, that would be fine. Right, but it's it, none of that stuff really seems like a really key feature at all. Like they, no, it's but cool it, it, that they have it. Sure, but I mean also. But it, I, I love fantasy. I love fantasy sports. It's that much but less I also a, don't care. It's less. It's that much less of a novelty. Like it's. Yeah. It's like, why bring it up? Yeah. At that point, if, if, you, if, you, if you're leverage, like it makes sense why they're using that service because they're paying four hundred million dollars to partner with the NFL. But yeah. anyway, small thing. But the, the people that do care, like that, is a huge differentiator that makes that totally. feature completely useless. Yeah, it's absolutely. Just, Especially if you're, you know, if, if a bunch of people in your fantasy league are morons. Yeah, like but they're yeah, not going to they're not going to buy an morons. Xbox at all. Yeah, because yeah. that's like this is the one I know how to use. We have to use this one every year for the rest of my life. And if they change it, words, I'm just going to shoot myself. Or well, whatever you have, you know, your years of stat tracking from if you've been in the same league or whatever. Yeah, I get like yeah, there's yeah. there's legacy data there to right. be concerned with, and that's a totally valid thing. Jeff, what did you see today? Uh, you know, I, I feel like I talked about most of it already. Okay. Okay. Uh, went around to EA and saw some stuff, and and just kind of. What was the best thing you saw today? Uh, Titanfall. Yeah. Cool. Patrick, Can we or John Vignocchi's pretty face. I don't know. That's Fair enough. <laughs> Same difference. <laughs> Powered by the cloud. Very much so. Uh, probably the best thing I saw today uh, was Tearaway. Uh, Media, Media Molecules Vita game. Like, I mean Tearaway. Tearaway. Yeah. I was trying not to say it. But then you <laughs> I don't get it. Jack, During the Jack press conference, Trenton called it oh, tear, right. tear away. That's right. That's oh. right. Um, it was a weird, like, 
There was a moment where he said a, like a, a series Dude, of titles where I'm like, I don't know that Jack Trent so knows what he's saying. Sometimes you yeah. get vapor locked on that teleprompter. <laughs> yeah. The words are just the, the yeah. shit is coming at you, and yeah. you just are. It is flowing through you and out your mouth, and you yeah. are not no longer. You were a too, vessel. Jack Trent really did a yeah. fantastic. To job. his oh, credit, yeah. to his credit, I could see the teleprompter with that thing, and he ad libs fully like half of the stuff he says on that stage, huh. like his whole oh, spiel. Yeah. At the top of that uh, of that whole press conference about how E three is like your birthday and Christmas, you remember that all rolled yeah, into yeah, one. Yeah. All of that was a blank line on the teleprompter. Like he stuck all that in between two paragraphs. You know, huh. like he's the guy's a pro. Uh, so yeah, Tearaway is just fucking pure joy into a game. Like me, it's it justifies all of the weird things that the Vita has that shouldn't be there and no one else is using. Like yeah. the same way Nintendo has not made a good argument for why the gamepad is a like useful input device except in like some really rare cases like Tearaway even uses the front facing camera in like really unique ways where like the the way the game is structured is like you're uh, controlling this uh, this messenger like but you're a god in the world and the game breaks the fourth wall and constantly like acknowledges that like you as the player are the god mm. and will there's a portion up up front where they they have the 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 front facing camera take a picture of you and then you just kind of like are featured throughout the world as like a god like you were you were portrayed it's a very as the sun yeah. Thing yeah. Too, yeah yeah and you know like the it, it you know they don't over use the like gimmick that was kind of in the trailer of like oh your thumbs are coming through the rear touchpad instead what happens is like constantly you are controlling the character uh, you are tapping the the back uh, touchpad in like a, in a rhythmic fashion in order to uh, get a character from like one section to the other it's just it's it's a total delight to play. Like had a smile on my face the entire time, and like a lot of the games I've enjoyed in Vita don't necessarily take advantage of the reasons that the Vita has like all these sort of unique hardware features. And it seems like Muta Molecule really looked at it and said, "Someone's got to make a case for it." Yeah. yeah. Like doesn't mean you're gonna buy it because of it or that these features needed to be here. Right. But we're gonna make interesting uses of all those pieces. That's what I felt so, about Frobisher says. Like it, you know, yeah, in, totally. in more of a tech demo y sort of way because that is just such bite-sized things but yeah like same deal of just like they just said screw it man this camera you could point it at things and it'll know what color stuff is we can <laughs> yeah. make that work like just the crazy uses for yeah. the stuff that's on that thing but it's, it's weird because like that game has been sort of in the press cycle for a while like it's been out there but like Sony has said very little about it and they really haven't done much to promote it like at PAX East like Media Molecule wasn't even at the Sony section. Like they had their own little booth where they didn't even have the game. They were just yeah, it was just merch. a video. It's and it's yeah. too bad because yeah, it's yeah. it seems like they're 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 really onto something. And like the I I love the aesthetic and the charm of the Little Planet games, but despise them because the platforming is it's abysmal. Um, so I I like them and hate them in, in equal fashion. Um, but, but that would that tear away. Really, really like tear away. And then uh, like right across from that was the Batman game. Um, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. for the Vita game. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, right, yeah, they right. have that, yeah. Oh, Which wow. is a really strange, strange game. So, like, I sort of thought it was going to be Metroidvania, and maybe that part oh, is, yeah, is yeah. in it, but it is... Uh, what was really fascinating was that they have the same combat from the 3D Arkham games huh. in 2D. And so the way it okay. works is that you're moving left to right, and you have enemies on, on your left and right, uh, and so you have the counter system, and the game... the the character models move in 3D out of the 2D plane, but only once you've executed the action. So while you're mm -hmm. punching or countering or throwing or uh, th uh, throwing a batarang, then huh. the game knows, like, all right, well, this is the animation cycle, so now we're going to make it kind of move in and out and in and out. So it looks way more dynamic than it actually is, huh. but when you're playing, you're just moving left to right and huh. reacting uh, to... Not the enemies, but you're reacting to like sort of like you know the ha you need to counter now like right, sort of the, yeah. the, the standard uh, Arkham combat. Uh, so that part was kind of interesting. It, it it works. It's a little bit janky, but it it might be just because it's early. But surprisingly, so it worked really well. It translated really well to a 2D environment. Uh, and otherwise, it was just it was it was really pretty. And like your uh, you know on the Vita version, like you you touch the front screen to go into detective mode, and that like shows you like parts of the environment you can like throw batarangs at and destroy to use your uh, your grapple to kind of get along. Uh, it was a pretty short demo, but the combat was a thing that like fascinated me the most of like, I thought they would have ditched a lot of the mechanics, but instead it's actually like 
if you've played an Arkham hmm. game, like you'll be able to play this game. Uh, that's cool. kind of up front. So that it's, sounds exciting. Like, it's, like uh, I think like Origins just, just doesn't. You know, it'll probably be super fun. You know, it's all totally all right, but uh, yeah, that. Actually I think sounds, the handheld thing sounds, sounds way way more exciting, and the Vita one is obviously going to be the prettier of the two. Right. Um, like you, not to be cynical, but probably the 3DS version has a map on this <laughs> the Ooh. second screen. How about um, what about your inventory? Yeah, or that. So Ooh, uh, or both. It, I have my all gadgets. <laughs> can I select my gadgets for my bag? Get, maybe you can call the Batmobile. I don't know. Oh. On the bottom screen is your gadget bag. <coughs> Tap the upper left to call the Batmobile. I'm just spitballing here. I just I can't. I'm Alfred. I can't imagine. I can't imagine ever playing a game that's out on both of those things on the 3DS. Like I would always go for the bigger screen and the better graphics over a second screen. I, I, well, think, I think it depends you know, on the game. You know, it depends, I, I it depends on how well, well you use the screen. I mean, you know, with, with the, 3, I mean, the 3DS is the dominating handheld platform from a sales perspective. You know, yeah. those developers are maybe. incentivized to take advantage of, of those features. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, it's, I feel like if they're developing it for a platform that doesn't have that, they can't do anything that integral on it. Yeah, there's that but, too. But we'll yeah. see. Uh, and then the last thing I played was D4, which is not good. Okay, yeah. great. Oh no, I swear again. Uh, <laughs> or Thief 4. Oh, Thief 4. Sorry. <laughs> I, thought you said D4. I honestly thought you said D4, too. So. It's just no, Thief, Thief, right? Or yeah. yeah, just Thief. Thief. Yeah. Thief. Yeah. So what's um, not good about it? Uh, comparative to other like recent stealth games, including ones that Square has put out, uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution, um, it's. I hope it's just really early. It just plays. Uh, it's not. God, imagine if it's really early. What that <laughs> means? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, that game's been in development for a long, yeah. long time and yeah. has a weird development history. But uh, it just didn't. It was. It was really rough to the point that I played about 10, 15 minutes of it and was just like, I. Had, I need to. No, thank you. No, no thanks. That's like, sort of the impression I had of it prior to the show. Uh, like the like the little like. Brad, like the demo we saw at GDC, yeah. there is zero way to replicate that way of playing that Wait, game really? at like the the version they were showing. Like wow. the, I have seen the difference between like developer run demos and then what you get to play. Yeah, it came across based on what I played that like what they showed us at GDC. Lying is 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 a bold term, but it is it is disingenuous what huh. they showed to us at GDC wow. versus what the players are actually able to do. Wow. It's an E3 demo. Things can change. Yeah. Like, you know, that game's coming out, I think, next spring. But Wait, really? It's I think it's sometime next that year. That far off? Yeah. I, I might be wrong on that. But yeah. like, no, it's, I, mean, I, I believe it. It's not two years off. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it, it, was, it was really rough. Huh. I'm, I, I was really disappointed because I, I traditionally like those games a yeah. lot. Um, so, kind of a bummer. Oh, Miami, too. We can't. we can't. We're literally embargoed Wait, until the 19th. We're actually talking about it. Yeah. Online you can't too. embargo things at E3. What are you doing? Tell that to the good people. To devolve or PR for, well, for, for that thing. So. Not about to tell Mike Wilson anything. All right, yeah. <laughs> so. Sorry. Then I, then I push. Sorry for bringing it up. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I would, I would say that was probably the best it's thing I saw. It's a sequel to Hotline day. Miami. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So Alex, any anything else? Well, I saw that. Yeah, uh, I'll talk about that more on the nineteenth. I also saw the Quantum Break demo. Uh, Remedy was was showing a little bit of that uh, behind closed doors. Were you able to make more sense of it? Yeah, than I, what was shown at the when they actually sit down and tell you what it is, it it you're almost a little disappointed because it's very straightforward. So it's it's like, squad based third person cover shooter. It's not squad based. <laughs> ah. <laughs> It's just a. It's Wait. Just a <laughs> <laughs> oh no! E3 2013 is falling apart all around me. <laughs> it's just gotta a, grab myself out of the frozen thing, <laughs> of exploding quantum break, and I know oh, get out of here. Put yeah. yourself back on that bed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's a it's a third person shooter, um, but it's also a TV show. Um, the, how, how do those parts? That was not super clear. What they showed was a couple of brief. But sort of controlled by them gameplay scenarios and one scene from this TV series which is live action um, and their whole thing was that like okay we love pop culture we love doing these different kind of media things like Max Payne was a graphic novel 
Alan Wake had like the sort of chapter book stuff. And, they, and they've there. had fake TV Stephen shows. And they've had fake TV there. shows yeah. and the other stuff. So this was their way of saying, okay, we want to do this TV mix thing. Are they going to make a TV show that's as good as their fake TV shows? I, I don't know. The scene they showed didn't really show it's, me it, much This is anything. why I want them to just stop fucking around with the game stuff. Yeah. Like, I want just... Just make a show. Sam Lake should I'd just be, be making fucking TV. I think I would be happier point. if the Remedy guys were yeah. focusing entirely on just spinning some straight-ahead narrative fiction. It is a sci-fi action game where the three main characters in the game, which you all play at different times, all have these different time manipulation powers. You are also shooting dudes... There are things going on. He, they were very vague about it. They really didn't want to talk about anything specific, either because they couldn't or didn't want to. Do you have a laser? I don't know. I, you know, Do I you will have a. You have a gun at one point. Gun. I there was, is machine guns. There I will. Are machine guns. I will still follow Remedy to Hell. Yeah. Like, <laughs> regardless of. So the only they'll get thing, you there eventually. The only thing they were sort of adamant about was that when whatever you do in the game will tie into how the live action TV stuff plays out for you. And so like there are different scenes, I guess there is like a difference in how the story progresses depending on certain decisions you make within the game. So to, they're really long cutscenes? They're That's, kind of, yeah, yeah, there's like yeah. weird FMV cutscenes. It's they say it's like a whole season's worth of television mixed in with the game. They're calling it like season one, but like in the conversation. But I, how it all melds together, they they either couldn't or wouldn't say. But you, Guys, FMV. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, basically yeah. Remedy's doing FMV, right. yes. yeah. except for the part where you Which don't play the fine. FMV. Sam, like, fine, star of the TV show. There's nothing. Let's let's be clear. There's nothing wrong with this. Yeah, yeah. They're that just, part's that part's uh, great. Yeah. But 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 at the same time, they're they're you know there's cinematics that you view in between playing the game. They're just cutscenes. Yeah, basically, and, and the, the the whole TV thing, like you know, it's the previously on Quantum Break, yeah, and yeah. you know, next time on. But, you Quantum know, Al, Alan Wake had that yeah. too. Like, but that's, but except now there's this live action aspect to it as well. Yeah. It, it all seems very strange and confusing, uh, except for the part that's the game, which is a third person action game. So, but again, they were showing so little of it. They spent arguably more time explaining these things than they did actually showing anything from the game. The, the right. stuff, the stuff you described to me about what the tone of it is yeah. sounded like a, a little bit X Files or Fringe or, yeah, or something it's like very, that. It's which very that kind of sounds sci-fi. exciting to me, but with more guns. Yeah. And they showed that boat thing again, but mm. gave again no context for it. It was just like, hey, here's this boat crashing, and then okay, now Sam Lake's talking for ten more minutes. Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> let's give Sam Lake a TV show. Yeah, yeah, totally. You starring, can just make, can just starring, make that Max Payne face forever. Yeah, starring Sam yeah. Lake. Yeah, that's well, like his equivalent of a. Sit- it's, it's like a wacky sitcom, and yeah. he's the neighbor, and he runs in and just makes that face. And that's then his catchphrase. Full of his flaws face. break. Like, so, yeah, woo! do you guys do you guys think Alan Wake is done? No. Is that it? They've, no. I think they've said that they're. Well, they, so they're they, when they put out a, um, at some point, right? so they did a humble bundle uh, a couple of weeks back, and put out a. Uh, it's totally worth watching. It's like a, it's like an eight minute video where Sam Lake sits down mm. and explains why Alan Wake Two is not happening um, yet like, or ever. Well, like, so basically, Alan Wake uh, year to date sold enough to justify making a sequel, whether it was mm. through Microsoft or someone else, or Microsoft allowing them to go take the franchise to someone else. Mm. But at the time, while they were waiting to get to that year to date sales, uh, they had a studio to run, and they're right. not a two man. They're not a two game studio. They're a one game studio. Um, you know, other than like American Nightmare being like a side thing, uh, and it, it's really interesting. Like he's just staring at the camera, oh, wow. ex- ex- okay. explaining it, like basically apologizing, saying like, yeah. "We want to come back to this. We would have made out like the plan was Alan okay. Wake too. So this is what you, they're you doing. guys made it happen. You yeah. guys did your job. Yeah. Unfortunately, there wasn't the timing enough. Didn't work the out. timing just not yeah. work out. So okay. it seemed like they planned to go back to okay. it. Okay. So it's, they're they're doing this. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to trivialize what they're doing, but they're using this to pay the bills to some extent. Eh, we'll see. I mean, you know, I mean, it's not. It's definitely not a launch game. And oh, really? No, it's okay. definitely not a launch game. And they say all. It's all a downloadable, like episodic thing. No, right? it's not. No, it's I a full it, game. Yeah, the a whole episode. So all the episodes, literally the whole season of TV, is just on in the game. That's you why. That's game, why I think the, the TV season analogy is very disingenuous because you're yeah. getting everything on the disc. But that's how TV seasons work now too. They just go yeah. up on Netflix and you just watch. Yeah, it. yeah. it's House of Cards. It's I don't think House we're quite thing. to the point yet where that analogy holds across yeah. the okay. board. You know. Sure. Right. And uh, fine. So they they said there was a date and they have in mind. They would not say what it is, but just that it is definitely not coming at launch for the system. Mm. So well, it is remedy. You know, they take their sweet time with yeah. stuff. 
And then you and I also saw Fantasia giant yep. fly again, here. which, I mean, you know, you guys have talked about it. We amount. talked about it, and we also got direct feed of the, the demo. So, yeah. uh, so we'll have more on that. So, yeah, as I, again, mentioned it earlier in the show, we'll have uh, that up on the site later on. And yeah. uh, I think, it, yeah, it impressed me more the second time that I saw it yeah. than, than the first time. And I think that's partially because the first time I saw it, I was in my own head so much thinking about just the kind of tragic history of the Fantasia, like the, the film Fantasia, and feeling like God, I just, I can't shake the feeling that, that a similar fate could befall this game of not of being really ambitious and doing some really interesting things, but maybe just not quite finding the audience. But this time, I wasn't thinking about that at all. I was just like, show me a game, let's see a yeah. game, and from that perspective, like, this seems really fun. I There are things about this visually that I, it's connecting with me on a, a really profound level, just I some of the visual effects that they're using. It was... Uh, and again, I, I think I say this in the uh, in the actual demo we yeah. recorded uh, was you know this is your trippy light show launch game for your new system, you know. It's the new Fantavision. Yep, it's I, I said the new Fantavision, and then oh, I started making. I love it's Fantavision. Like the yeah. it's, get high it's, too. it's not a launch game. It's not. It's a 2014 game. Yeah. Uh, well, fair enough. But yeah. It's, but yeah. Your your launch window. Your yeah. That don't you start on this launch window shit. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. That's it's for a meaningless term. Yeah. Fair Meaningless. Enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, okay. Then that's day one. That was day one. In the can. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> but Tumblr. Uh, so, I mean, yes. We got, we got a bunch of appointments tomorrow. So yeah. Stuff coming up. Yeah. I'm going to go see yeah. Activision and. Uh, More hands on time yeah. Nintendo stuff and yeah. Ubisoft. Yeah. A bunch of Sony stuff. Yeah. A bunch of Microsoft stuff. Go see More Dead, Microsoft stuff. Go see Dead Rising 3. Mm. Try to get to the bottom of that. I get to see World of Tanks. Yep. Oh, no, I'm going to run over. I saw they have uh, Tekken Revolution. I guess that's out now. Um, oh, weird. Oh. They put it out on is today the 11th? Was yep. Okay. Yes. Today so was the 11th. I, I they pulled the pull to, Saturn. To today, yeah. Um, I want to see the how they're game. selling that Tekken thing. Mm. I, don't, I don't know. So I'm going to go take a look at that. Breaking my rule of not playing games at E3 that are out or just about to come out. But right. uh, I, I wanted to run up to... The Last of Us kiosks and just yell, "Stop playing this game! <laughs> you are ruining it for yourselves. Just go fucking buy it. Yeah, uh, go get an order in. Uh, you, you know, know, go pick it up on Friday. You always, you always see, even when companies are showing games that have been out for a couple weeks, you still see people playing them. Yeah, always. Yeah. But hey, it's there, new were, to me. there were a lot of people lined up for yeah. it. You know? so Some, that, yeah, there's yeah, well, people sure. who never touched The Last of Us in any capacity. So having it, right I mean, there I, I, them. I hadn't. Really yeah. touched it until it, uh, you know, until it had, it had come out. So, or yeah. until we, we got that yeah. copy in, um, I would recommend people do that. Yeah, that game's pretty good. Yeah, it is. All right, then uh, on that note, we're gonna call this a night here, day one, uh, E3 2013, Giant Bombs After Hour Show. Dunzo, we will uh, see you guys back here uh, tomorrow. We've got even more guests lined up. It's going to be a freaking madhouse. A lot of here. big ones tomorrow. Oh, yeah, yeah, we have some heavy, heavy <laughs> hitters coming in tomorrow, uh, tomorrow yeah. night. Yeah, so I was, I was shocked that we raided some of these guests. But yeah, <laughs> they haven't seen the place yet. They're going to be so <laughs> disappointed with all of this. So, so uh, stay tuned. It's, it's going to be uh, an interesting show. Uh, but uh, that's it for tonight, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow, day two, E3 2013.